one like my intro last week. You could do it again. <laughs> I don't know if it was good last week or not. I didn't really watch. I What's going good. on, ladies and gentlemen? We are live. Welcome to Overdose 6. Um, this has been like the hour of fucking technical difficulties, but <laughs> let's forget about that because we're going to have a good time. Let's start with intros. All the way on the right, we have the yellow bus, whoop, but it's whoop. a dry heat. He's in Arizona. And then we have Sean Shank, who has more beer than vocabulary words floating around in his brain. Absolutely. And, uh, and Latuzek, who actually has a camera that, ta that takes away 10 pounds. It's a magical camera. He's actually a lot fatter than that in real life, if you can imagine that. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so who's got the first topic today? <laughs> After let's, sh let's shake all this shit off. So, okay, let me first start by saying that we're using Google+, Plus, and I love it because it's free. Latuzek just mentioned this. But what the fuck, like... For for our viewers out there, we've been we've been fiddling around now for the past hour trying to get this shit to work, and hopefully it's actually going to broadcast for you guys. Thank you, Google. Okay, who's got our first topic? Why don't we um talk about we were talking about a little bit on the pre-show. Let's talk about the Derrick Rose thing going out here out in Chicago. Yeah, let's talk about. Oh, it. let's let's dive yeah. right into that. I think that's a great Dive. topic to talk about, get started on, especially considering the Bulls just uh, spanked the defending world champion, Miami Heat, yesterday. I think that's the thing that I'm I'm happiest about, Sean, is that, uh, you know, this is one of the topics I submitted, and it was, uh, I don't know, you know, three, four days ago I came up with it, and in the interim, the Bulls had a grueling Game 7. Nobody thought they were going to win. Um, you know, they got a bunch of backup bench players uh, in there. You, you got most of your starters out. Derrick Rose has been cleared to play for over two months and, and still won't get his, his punk ass off the bench. The Bulls wind up winning the series, and then they have to fight the defending champs, you know, and LeBum and company. And uh, I love all the sports analysts. Nobody even said that they would win one game, you know. And they wound up uh, coming out and uh, showed you that, you know, heart can beat a big payroll. Um, you know, and not all the time, but certainly sometimes. And uh, that was pretty exciting to see that they wound up winning, stealing a game, game one on the road, uh, you know, in oh, Miami. Yeah. So definitely a good boost for Chicago. So, uh, you know, uh, no, so I agree. congratulations I, to, to the Bulls yeah, for that. Congratulations to the Bulls. I mean, nobody expected them to get past uh, Brooklyn. Um, I mean, I think I feel a little bit differently about you. I think we talked about that in the pre-show is, you know, I mean, none of us are in Derrick Rose's shoes and uh, – you know, I think, and I, I know we talked about this earlier, that, you know, he just needs to come out and say, hey, you know what, I'm not going to play this year. You know, I, I'm not mentally there. He just needs to come out and, you know, speak his mind and stop leading everybody on and stop putting a carrot in everyone's fucking face and saying, ooh, maybe I'll play next game. Maybe I'll play next game. He just needs to grow the balls and say, <laughs> you know what, guys, I'm mentally I'm not fucking there and I'm not going to play. You know what? I mean, and you think about it, does he come in and, you know, let's say he came in in game three or two even. I mean, how does he fuck up the chemistry? Does he fuck up the chemistry? I mean, yeah, he gives him a big offensive boost, but, I mean, they're they're doing pretty damn good without him. I mean, they end up being the number five seed um, in a tough conference, you know, with the defending world champions. They dethroned, uh, what, Miami's 27-game winning streak this year. Oh, they, also yeah, that was beautiful. They, also, they also dethroned New York's winning streak this year, the, the Knicks. So, I mean, they've played very, very well this year without their superstar player. I mean, as a Chicago fan, one thing to be excited about is how good can they be when Derrick Rose does come back next year? Yeah, absolutely. The thing that bothers me the most about it, and we did talk a little bit about this as well, is that he's been clear. First of all, let me, let me preface this by saying last year when he went down in game one of the playoffs and that happened, I said, you know what, I don't even want to see him play next year, okay? But as time went went on and it got to be around Christmas and they started making a timetable and the doctors were saying he's progressing well and then you started seeing him in January or February and pregame warm-ups and Duncan and all this other stuff putting on a show you thought wow this is great and then they cleared him back around around the beginning of March March 1st I think it was and you thought oh okay well great now everybody's cleared him to play you know what I mean he's uh, he's healed up well he's playing you know and uh, or, you know, he's, he's suiting up and and a uh, day in day out just just not going to play. You know, the Bulls needed him for that crucial run to get a, a higher seating, I think, in the playoffs. And listen, if you're going to sit out the year, like like you said, just come out, be a man about it, and just say, you know what, I'm mentally not there. The doctors say I'm physically there, but guess what? I know me, I know my body, I'm not going to play. So don't expect it. 
but don't come out and, and tease us every day and then watch your, your, your teammates go and play. You got guys getting teeth knocked out and getting stitches in halftime and coming back out and putting up fucking 20 points in the second half. You know, you got guys playing on one foot, guys playing with with, with colds and broken this and twisted that and everything. And this guy's the healthiest guy on the team, making the most money, mind you, and he's sitting on the bench. You know, and I, I think that's what bothers me, you know, is that I think he would probably ruin the chemistry they have right now. But the bottom line is, is that you're doing a disservice to yourself and your image, as far as I'm concerned, uh, overall, by not coming out and just being upfront honest. You know, I mean, what's... How's it going to hurt you? You know what I mean? At this point, <laughs> so you know you've already got everybody in Chicago. You don't want to put your head on a, on a pike, you know. But well, not to play devil's advocate, but play it, um, play it, play it. The media has kind of made it more than it is. Derek really never said that. You know, I am going to come back. Like the doctor cleared him. Uh, who knows how? You know that happened. Maybe the doctor favors him. Maybe there's some kind of pressure that, you know, GMs or something put it on to where, oh, yeah, he's cleared. You know, he's, he's really young. He's the MVP of last year and or the, the regular season MVP. And maybe, like, he does want to come back. But there's also a thing where, you know, there's hope. You know, if people are saying, well, we're doing this good right now. Uh, you know, what, what if we get him, you know? And with the seed, seeding thing, you know, uh, you know, better seed or not, you're going to have to beat Miami. And the thing that they're doing is they're they're adapting really well. Uh, not to go too far off tangent, but, you know, Nate Robinson's good, but he's a tired little guy. Uh, Joe Kim Noah can't guard LeBron, and that's what's going to make or break the series. Is when they put Butler on LeBron, that's, that's when it truly started to come together, if you guys watched the game. I mean, whenever Noah was there, you know, he got dunked on, he got posterized, it was disgusting. Noah makes excuses and bitches because when he gets outplayed, he just can't play, period. But I think a huge thing is just hope, you know, and he, I, I can't really say, you know, and that's another story, too. Someone is trying to sue Derrick Rose for making him fat because he got depressed. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's suing him for eat, overeating because ever since February when he got cleared, he was just he, he got anxiety attacks after anxiety attacks, started eating and gained like 50 pounds since February. Wow. That's, so uh... other than – but the, the, the thing comes down to it, you know, he, he tore, you know, his ACL. I, I believe it was ACL, and I think he had knee problems before that and maybe a hip bruising before that. So, I mean, I, I know people who, have you know – College, collegiate sports, professional sports, when you injure that, like, sometimes you're just not, not coming back from it. So him being that young, you know, yeah, the media is kind of making a big deal because he's the old MVP, but, you know, he really hasn't come out and said, like, I will play. He's just saying that I – he hasn't come out and said I will not play, which I understand he probably should. He's not going to play this season. But well, on yellow bus, seating, this is where I mean, you, have, you have Miami, a degree in this area too, right? Isn't that what your major is in? Well, is it this type I, of stuff? Yeah, I have, a, I have a degree in kinesiology, but when it comes down to like injuries and whatnot, you, you really don't know because uh, you, you know everyone's different. Everyone, if you're older in your career and you think you could win it that year, you know, of course he's going to start playing and. Derek's, Derek's so young, and, you know, he's the type of guy that is very cautious. Have you ever seen him in an interview? Have ever seen him ever, pretty much anything but on the court? He's a very cautious, very careful, very soft-spoken. He wants to make sure he's not going to end his career. He he's loves the calculated. game. He's very calculated. But, you know, I mean, the team's backing him. The coach is backing him. So, uh, you know, more power to it. And if we can beat the Heat now without him, then there's absolutely no excuse. No, there is there's no excuse. I mean, if they if they can beat the Heat without him, which I don't believe they they're going to, but I mean, even by winning one game, really kind of shocked the world. Even Joe Kim Noah said yesterday, or no, it wasn't. It was uh, Thibodeau uh, was talking about how you know uh, the big three missed some uh, some easy shots, and he says a lot of it has to do with rust. And he's glad that you know at least they got to see that now, so hopefully they can adjust by game two, and uh, you know hopefully shut them down again. I mean, and, that's and the you bad part. And you see this type of stuff happen so often in sports, uh, period, you know, when, when you have these long series, you know, that the team that winds up having the grueling six, seven game series that everybody says is going to be run down, 
I mean, they're warm, man. They've been playing. They're fresh. You know, the world champions have been sitting on their asses for a week, you know, running practice drills and, you know, uh, and doing commercial shoots or whatever it is that half these these uh, these people do uh, on, on the heat. And uh, But see, one thing that I've noticed in any type of pro sports is that momentum is a real big thing. And uh, the Bulls, you know, have a lot of heart. They've carried that momentum in. They, they took game one on the road, which nobody said they could do. And, uh, you know, when, when all said and done, they, they may make it a real good series, you know, and uh, and if and if the Heat aren't you know aren't real careful and they don't play real hard, uh, you know, tomorrow night and make sure that they come back to Chicago one and one, they're going to be in some big trouble, you know, because the last thing you want to do is go and take a team that already has been told they can't win, they're the underdog, their star players out, all these things, and then go and and you know and, and throw fuel in the fire and go and uh, and like I said, let let them you know get some hope because now they you know they, they come back to Chicago even if they're tied one and one. I, you know, I, I think they can make a, they can make it a good series. Yeah. I think you're right, though. Like what you said about like momentum, there is sort of like a magic to momentum, right? Like it's it's a weird thing. If it, if anybody's ever played on like a sports team and you have that momentum, it's it's sort of like an unstoppable force. It's kind of weird. So like I, I I don't know a lot about sports. I don't I don't follow them, so I don't I don't know a lot of what you guys are talking about because I see it floating around. So like <laughs> I, I I get what's going on, but uh, but yeah, like what you said about about uh, that. Once you you get that momentum going, man, it's like it's just it's totally a game changer. Put something in your corner. I don't know what that is. Well, and the Bulls, you know, a lot of the guys have a chip on their shoulder to begin with because uh, when when LeBron wound up uh, making a big spectacle of of leaving Cleveland and the announcement and where he was going to go and everything else, a lot of people in Chicago thought that we should have fought harder to try to get him or to try to get Dwayne Wade or, or Chris Bosh, and they all wound up you know coming together down in Miami and, and we got Carlos Boozer. And, um, you know, a lot, of people, a lot of people were not, you know, excited about that. But the Bulls have been playing with a chip on their shoulder. I mean, they are the ones that ended Miami's 27 or 28-game winning streak. Oh, you know? shit. And, uh, well, that's Thank good. You. So, yeah, that, that's definitely it. not good at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm still hosting, so. Oh, okay. Well, fantastic then. So I'm not talking to just myself. And, and no, we're still, we're, <laughs> still, we're, still, we're still on. He's he already to... admitted he doesn't know what we're talking about <laughs> sports-wise. So. But uh, it's because you had to get off to, to Google some of those things. But uh, but at any rate, though, you know, like I said, the, the momentum back. that they had carrying them into, you know, they, they did end that streak back in, you know, uh, late March or early April or whatever the case is. And, uh, you know, they're coming in now, you know, pissed off, man, and hungry, you know. So, you, you, know, you I mean, know what's so great about them is on paper, mm -hmm. you, wouldn't, you wouldn't even expect them to even make it to the playoffs. I mean, oh, yeah. take, out, take out Dang, take out Heinrich, and, you know, they beat the, the defending champions in the first game. They uh, beat the – the Brooklyn Nets in Game 7, um, I mean, it's amazing what they're doing. I mean, it's just, you know, and I know that, you know, everyone's in Chicago. It's, you know, if they could do this without, you know, three players, what if these three people are playing? Oh, yeah, absolutely. How good could they be? Because yeah, essentially well, right now they're playing with what, with what are bench players on, on just about any other team. Yep. Uh, you know, they're just your, your backup guys, and they're not even good, like, sixth-man type people. You know what I mean? A lot of these people are like, who, who the hell are you? You know, you're a guy that's brought in for defense on a particular player, you know? <laughs> so, Well, just to interject, I mean, you know, maybe they, if they had all those people, it would be good, but, you know, there's a meme this morning. There's I, I saw two memes. One was constructive to where it's, you know, Nate Robinson and Derek Rose, like, kind of bumping chests, but... There's a meme this morning that uh, said, like, you know, it has Nate Robinson, and obviously it's not his words, but they're like, Derek who? Like, yeah, I mean, these, these players are great, but, you know, we, we have a strong bench. We've always had a strong bench for the past, you know, half decade. And let's, let's not forget, you know, we did these great things in the playoffs, but when we played the Heat in the regular season this year, we went 2-2. Two and two. So, I mean, we, were, we went 500 versus the, the leading champion during the regular season so yeah I mean they're they're more healthy at the moment but when it comes down to it uh, you know if we're two and two and we're already one and0 right now we're technically winning the overall series so I, I don't think Chicago should be counted out at all I mean I know all the analysis are like heat and five heat and six heat and seven but you know now it's like we win one game and everyone's like well can the Bulls win in six you know like I think that the Bulls could beat any team other than uh, you know the Spurs because the Spurs kind of take us out every single time, every chance they get. <laughs> I mean, yeah. my, my whole point is, you know, I don't, you know, if they even if they lose and take the Heat to seven games, the Heat are going to be feeling it going in that next round. 
you know, against uh, who is it going to be? Indiana, New York, right? Is mm -hmm. who they play. Yeah. Um, you know, and I mean they're both good teams, so you know um, they're, they're going to feel if they have, and then if they you know if they get past that and have to go on and play probably San Antonio, you know, just because they had this week rest, you know, they're going to be beat up, you know, especially if they do. Let's say they do, you know. Uh, beat the Bulls in seven. You know that's a lot of a big morale booster, basically against a team who doesn't have a superstar, and they have supposedly three superstars. Yeah, well, it'd be absolutely embarrassing for them, and it'd be a big mental hurdle, uh, I, th I think, to overcome in the next round. You know, but uh, but as I said, you know, I, I always I like to root for the underdog. I've been a Cubs fan my whole life, you know, so I'm used to you know seeing the team that, the team <laughs> that used never to wins losing. anything, you know. So uh, yeah, I'm just you know just kind of used to it, I guess, at this. Point, but uh, but like I said, I mean, I, I have seen a lot of teams that were not the best, uh, you know, the best players uh, on paper, you know, that were put on the field or, or the court uh, that have won or, or gone very deep in the playoffs, you know, simply because they had better chemistry, more heart, they happen to have momentum, um, you know, it caught the other team off guard, you know, obviously uh, this this game one, Miami was shaken off the rust and didn't play well. You know, if the Bulls can carry that momentum in and uh, make it close or even steal game two, I think the Heat are in some big fucking trouble. Just my personal opinion. So, but you heard it here first. So, you yeah. agree? Yeah, I wish I, I wish I knew more about sports. Actually, no, I don't <laughs> wish that. I'm lying. I, I'm perfectly content not knowing. But I watched during the the second three peat of the Bulls here in Chicago for. Viewers who aren't from Chicago, what was it? Night. The second three P was ninety nine. That was the second set. And then the, what was there? A one, a one year or, or two year break between the first well, they, and second. Yeah, they sets. had ninety two, ninety three, yeah, ninety four, and then uh, ninety five was the yeah ninety five was the year that Jordan uh, decided to you know leave his father again killed. He went to go play baseball and other stuff, and then uh, he came back in ninety six, and they but but like halfway through the season. And they did get to the playoffs, but they wound up getting beat by uh, Magic and uh, or the uh, Shaq and the Magic. And uh, and then the next year, when they came back in '97, they had picked up Rodman. They wound up uh, sweeping uh, Shaq and the Magic in the first round, which I thought was poetic justice. So, but uh, I always liked Rodman. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you could change the colors and be hanged on. Rodman Dude, was great. I mean, Rodman was like Jim McMahon was for the Bears back in the 80s. You know, when the Bears' defense was doing all that that great stuff, and they were, they, I mean, they videotaped the Super Bowl shuffle in six weeks into the season, you know. I mean, can you imagine that? What kind of balls do you have to go and tape and air something saying that we're going to win the Super Bowl, and you're not even halfway through the season, you know. But McMahon took a lot of the heat off of him just by being a goofy bastard like he was, man, you know, wearing his headbands and having the crazy <laughs> hair and stuff like that. Just some of the shit that he said was real out there. But he did a great job of taking the media's attention and bringing it to him and not on, you know, what was going on overall with the team, you know, the team's goals and everything else. And Rodman was great for that shit too, man. You know, he'd come out and just say some crazy off-the-wall shit. And, uh, it, it was funny, man. I like the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. but I mean that. I mean, he brought so much fire onto the court, man. Because I mean, he was just so physical and uh, physical. Know. I mean, yeah, he couldn't shoot worth shit, but you know, I mean, he would. I mean, he would play for those boards like nothing, man. I mean, oh god, yeah, he used to he used to fight, man. He used to fight for him. So that was just, there were some good times. But you know what, though, I for one, I I took those years for granted. Because, uh, you know, it got to be just so commonplace that, I mean, I wouldn't even watch the finals anymore. I'd have them on in the background while I was overdrawn or listening to some music or something because it was almost a given that they were going to win. Uh, and then we had about, a, you know, a decade of dog shit. You know, I mean, Ryan yeah. Storff, they, they broke up that team, I think, a year or two uh, too soon. I think that if it wasn't all about the money and everything else and they had just paid everybody like they should have been, I think they probably could have won one more, you know, at, at least with that group. Because uh, you had guys like Ku Coach that was, you know, I mean, he was winning the Sixth Man of the Year Award, and, I mean, he was a, he was a, a starter on any, any other team, uh, but he was fighting for minutes on, on that particular Bulls team, you know, so. Uh, yeah, there was a time when, like, there was. Longly comments, anyone? <laughs> Luke Longley. <laughs> I just remember, I just remember Dan always jump. being like, "He's a he's a big piece of shit." That's all he used to yeah, say. Yeah, Luke Longley. The guy was seven foot two. He was a center, and the guy literally had like a like a two to four inch vertical jump. I mean, how pathetic <laughs> is that, man? I mean, you're seven well, foot two. I mean, you got to get at least a foot off the ground, and then you could block anybody. You know? So if you crazy the past four years, or I think the past three years, we had Omar Sheik 
and he was just like the modern day Luke Longley who finally carried him with the Rockets, <laughs> yeah, thank he, God. He, but he carried the this George guy was the Luke. carbon copy. He looked looked acted, he got the, the three inch vertical leap. Oh, he gets yeah. stuffed by someone like six <laughs> four. Yeah, and, and just by playing the bull just for, by playing for the Bulls, didn't he go on and get like a huge contract? Yeah, he did. Oh, yeah, I think he, he got a decent contract. He him made and Harden, some good money. Yeah, yeah, yeah he made yeah, some he good did. money. And he, he's, he's. I, I mean, look at us in Chicago. When did we ever have a real good center? You know, we've never had a a, a center we tried that's to get Howard. Been, what, what's that? We tried to get Dwight Howard, but he went to L.A. instead. Yeah, thank God he went to L.A. You know, but he's. You, you got the opportunity. He's going to tr- test the free agency market this year, and so is Chris Paul. Ooh, that'd be well, well, well. We're entering into like a, another period in, in Chicago history where like our teams are good again. Like what Jim was talking about, we had ten years the of dog shit. But before that, there was like a while where it was like, what sport aren't we the best at? And and it's coming back to that now. I mean, at least with the momentum I see with the Hawks. Again, I don't watch sports, but I see everyone on Facebook being like, the Hawks are fucking. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's all you have to do, really. I mean, even if you so don't watch winning. any of the games, man, you just you know you throw an ESPN app on your phone, occasionally look at a score, and then just look at the Facebook feed every now and then. And I I know everything that happens without even ever watching it. Yeah, I could sound really educated if I just bothered to memorize the names. But uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what it is. Like sports have just never like physicality's never really intrigued me. It doesn't it doesn't inspire me. You know, I don't know. Yeah, you're. You're more into the circle jerks, I understand. Exactly. And by the way, Sean, do you it's fucking team, change team your effort, clothes? Do, Sean, do you fucking change your clothes? It looks like you're wearing the same thing every fucking week. It's that, last, that black last, jersey and that backwards hat. Last week it was blue. It was a light blue. Oh, this, it was light blue. This, this oh, it's like a, he's got a he's got a closet in the spare bedroom that just says overdose on it in spray painted letters, and he opens it up and he's got like ten fucking outfits, the exact same thing hanging up in there. Yeah, I like do. SpongeBob SquarePants. You just open up and everything's on a hook and it's the same. Exactly. It's the exact same. <laughs> Dude, basically, if you go to his fucking house, look. Okay, Sean, just okay. Well, you don't even need to pay around people can tell by the fucking <laughs> echo of your voice that your house is completely empty and the thing is that's funny about sean is it's not like he's poor or something he just he has no interest in owning possessions it's weird you have like nine items in your whole life <laughs> see he true. laughs he doesn't even defend it it's so true well why am i what am i gonna do and say you're full of shit man <laughs> God. we should have dad come move in over with uh, with you over there i was i was talking to my father earlier today and he's been staying with us for the past five or six months and he was thinking about getting his own place and he was thinking about maybe finding a room somewhere and he says you know i wish i could find a place and this and that they're so expensive but uh, i don't really want to i don't really want to rent a room and i said yeah but you know what do you really picture yourself like cleaning a toilet hanging up pictures, <laughs> like mopping a floor, you know, like picking out furniture, setting a alarm. table. I said, you're kind of like a bare minimum type of guy. You know, you're one of those sort of, you know, I had a McDouble at McDonald's today, and that's like my meal, and it's 8 o'clock at night, and that's all I had. You know, and he goes and he looks at me, and he's like, you know what, you're absolutely right. <laughs> so I was like, so it's not really about what you want, you know. <laughs> it's like you'd probably be better off getting a room somewhere because everything is all inclusive, and all you got to do is keep your little 10 by 12 area clean. I mean, you know, it's like he sleeps in my couch downstairs and still can't keep that area nice and tight, you know? <laughs> it's it's like it's like a, a generational man's man thing. I I work I work for uh I work with an, an old man and it's one of those things where like, if you didn't feed him he would he would die because he wouldn't feed himself. <laughs> like it's it's just so weird. Like uh-huh. Yeah. I don't know. That that total that total like just disconnect like some people have it's, but I definitely feel like it is like a generational thing because Dad totally is like that. Like, hey, I I'll, I can work a thousand hours a week, but I can't. I don't know how to make a sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Like, yeah, seriously, it's, that's, crazy. it's pretty pathetic. And there's no like willingness to learn it either. You know what I mean? He's been here oh, for yeah. six months and he still doesn't know how like the on-demand button works on the, on, the, <laughs> on the remote. You know? And I've explained to him like because he's like, man, we come upstairs and he'll watch something with my wife and I, and he'll be like. Oh, this is great. There's no commercials because there'll be something I've taped on the DVR or something, or I, I pulled up on the end of man. Oh man, you know, because when I watch that, just got just got a deadliest catch downstairs and I short try fucking commercials, you know. And I said, seriously, I said I told you about the on demand thing. I said there's no commercials. <laughs> I said oh, I got I don't know how to work that, you know. And it's like, <laughs> but you'll complain about and suffer through 20 minutes of commercials for every hour of programming. Real I've never understood so. that like unwillingness to learn thing like old people in technology like I, and I think that's why I'm even more fascinated by people who are from older generations and make their living with technology because it goes to show that's really just a willingness thing like like yellow bus your 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 mom works completely on a computer 100% and 
She's yeah. what, probably in her mid or, or late fifties. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's it's the total old. proof that like okay, m my dad is okay. He's mid. What is he mid sixties? So that there's like yeah, probably a, a, a maybe a six or eight year gap. But it's not to say there aren't people who are in their mid sixties that aren't making their money with technology. So it's like you can learn. You can learn how to press like the start on the toolbar, and you can learn how to bring up Word and and type things down. Like you, you can learn all these things, but you won't. Like I, I don't get that. I never understood that. Yeah, it's always like, like this. And like my mom's actually things, turning. You know? She's. <laughs> Go ahead. My mom's turning 59 in December. Oh, okay. I just had to um, calculate in my head. I was like, wait a second. Her license plate is Meg's 54. That's 1954. Carry the one. <laughs> there you go. You have 58. Yeah, we know she'll go tomorrow. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Next but, week uh, we do counting and numbers. <laughs> <sighs> but, uh, yeah, that's just always fascinating because the, always the excuse, too, for old people for not learning technology is always like some bias, like half cock like statement it's always like oh and it, like something with no, no basis in anything you're just like okay like it'll you you can't you can do it you or they think if it. they slightly modify the word that it, and make it sound goofier you know i don't know anything about those internets yeah you what's know, a, it's what's like, about that you know, space page you're like, yeah, you know, it's, yeah, Facebook, exactly. you know, it's like that don't even start you know what the hell yeah. it is you know don't lie it's that might be shit. exclusive to our yeah. parents too because they always play that card of like oh I, I i don't know maybe if i sound frazzled i'll fool people no you won't like, we know we're on to you guys yeah. just so it you still know, works on me on because they still guilt me into going and setting shit up for them and everything you know so i just do the, i just i talk with them how i talk with my two-year-old and i and i walk them through it and i say it's okay you can be brave and you can do this <laughs> Um, you know, just to follow me, take my hand, and we're gonna we're gonna make this work. But uh, yeah, so okay, so uh, I was looking, I was cruising to the topic list, and I thought this one was funny from Sean: Subway versus Jimmy John sandwiches. Which do you prefer, and why? <laughs> well, it was because when I was with you the other day, we kind of discussed that a little bit because uh, we went out and had explain some... explain our conversation for the viewers. Well. It was after both of us sat and stared at each other for a half hour drooling. Um, we ended up was going this to this. Was this before or after the communal jerk? Um, well, which communal jerk are you discussing? Because there was like seven. <laughs> yeah, because we, we don't even have like a regular weekly time. Any it's substances? Like... What? What? Tim, Tim's been very robotic today. Have you guys had the same experience? Yes. Yes, I have. Well, it's my laptop. Oh, blame it on the technology. God Is it so robotic? Technology. All right, Shanky, explain our conversation while I eat Cheetos. Yeah, well, we were just we, we went to this deli by his house called Capri, and uh, then we were just uh, we were I think we were sitting at the table eating and we were discussing uh, Jimmy John's versus Subway, and I was just talking about how I prefer Subway because I can pay five bucks and I can get a fucking sandwich and I can get hundreds and thousands of ingredients, and I feel like for my five dollars it's worth it. If I go to Jimmy John's, it's like nine dollars. And it's like fucking 50 cents for cheese. So it's over 10 bucks for a sandwich that isn't even 11 or 12 inches long. And the so, sandwich is really, I mean, they're not, they're, they're not that great. I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're decent. I think there's a couple of good ones, but uh, they're, they're not slightly, they're slightly fresher than Subway, but, but, but not even by a lot. Well, and you know, when I saw that topic, I thought, I never even thought about that Subway versus Jimmy John's. I, I mean, I, I guess that, you know, they are in the same category. I always thought Subway's main competitors were like uh, Quiznos and those type of places. Yeah. You know, now, Quiznos, of course, is, down now? is very good, and they're but they're very overpriced. They're suffering right now. I, I think I yeah. think they're hurting because I haven't seen as many commercials and stuff from. I prefer uh, the taste, uh, uh, you know, of the actual sandwiches, and then of course I like the actual pepper bar that they have at the uh, the Quiznos. You know, with the three different types of peppers: yeah. the jalapenos, oh, the pepperoncinis, or banana peppers. It's great. There's like six, seven different peppers all laid out. Grab as many of them as you want. You know. You know, grab little cupfuls of them or whatever, um, you know. But uh, but I, I never even thought about you know Jimmy John's and Subway kind of being direct competitors. But I guess you know, they are, you know. But Jimmy John's I think has that edge because of their their delivery nonsense. You their know? delivery nonsense, yeah. the freaky yeah. fasting. Well, yeah. another one that's getting that's gaining some traction around here too is uh, Jersey Mike's. Jersey Mike's is pretty good too. I, I enjoy it, but again, it's on the it's on the higher end of expensive. It is the higher end of expensive, and so that's why that was but my it's point. It's better than Subway. That was the conversation I had with Shane. Yeah, it's like down. I went I went to a little private deli and I paid maybe a buck fifty, two bucks more than I would pay at a Jimmy John's. And Sean, you can attest to the quality, right? It's like fucking night and day. Oh man, I mean, I mean the uh, 
the sandwich was huge. I mean, yeah, you're paying like a buck fifty, but I mean, at least there, as compared to Jimmy John's, I felt it was worth it. You know, it was a fucking huge sandwich, and you know, mine and your fat ass both ate it, and we walked away. I, I walked away comfortably full. I could sometimes throw down a, a Jimmy John sandwich and you know be like, okay, what the hell else can I eat? Right. Or, no, that's the thing. It's like with, with Subway footlongs, I got to the point, and I was a little fat for a while in in my <laughs> appetite's defense. But even now, like having lost the weight and my appetite being different, I can eat a footlong oftentimes and be like, what? What did I just? Yeah, yeah. it's like eating Chinese or donuts, man. It's like air. <laughs> like a half an hour later, you know, you're just hungry again. It just Tetris so. has its way through your stomach and moves down, and then you're fucking. I think so, you know. And the other thing that maybe this could be in the discussion too, as a as a, a distant third or a, you know an ugly cousin or something. But um, I mean, pot bellies. <laughs> has anybody ever had pot oh, bellies? Oh, I love pot bellies. I think yeah, they're not, tasty. You know, I'm not a huge I'm not a huge pot bellies fan. I think that's one of the reasons I'm not a huge Quiznos fan. Is I don't like the the toasted, warm sandwich. The toasted, yeah, I'm just not a big fan of the toasted like... sandwich. When they ask me at Subway, I want to punch them in the face. Like, if I want a fucking <laughs> toasted sandwich, I'll go to Pop Bellies or fucking uh, Quiznos. Give me my uh -huh. fucking cold ass sandwich. Throw on 300 pounds. I, when I walk out of Subway, I want my fucking bag with my sandwich to weigh more than I do. I want to be able to drag it out of the building. <laughs> And no, See, my Sean's got a ghetto. Working. Sean's got Inches, a ghetto food Inches complex. Where Sean grew up in the ghetto, he had like syrup sandwiches, you know. So like, he wants his shit packed. <laughs> yeah, I'm straight. I like I warm sandwiches. You know what pisses me off about pot bellies though is when I was working at the Best Buy right down the street from the one near us here in Palatine. Yeah, that's um, that's right down right next plaza, I think, or same plaza. It's really close. It, I know that. It used to be when you came there, it was there. it was three seventy five. It was three seventy five for any sandwich and chips. And it was awesome. And they had a little sign at the end of the line that said, uh, don't worry, now you're only nine minutes away from having your sandwich. And there was a little disclaimer. It said, like, if we're longer than <laughs> ten minutes and you start at this point in the line, like, you'll get your sandwich for free. They took that sign down because they probably couldn't live up to it. But at first, when I walked in there, I was so impressed. I was like, three seventy five dollars a sandwich and you're going you're gonna to give me a free one? If you don't get it in ten minutes? Like, hell yeah. And it's just gradually the price has gone up and up and up, and it's kind of oh, yeah. aggravating now. You go yeah, and the, like, and the yeah, size of the sandwich and the quality is the same or has gone down. I mean, that's right. uh, that's an unfortunate thing that's happened, you know, and I've seen, especially over the last, you know, three, four years, the downturn of the economy, you've seen a lot of these places uh, raise their prices and lower their quality, you know, which is unfortunate. Right. But, but their chocolate shakes are the fucking the shit nugget. I've never oh, had. Yeah. I've never had one there. Oh, dude. I didn't even know that they, yeah, I'll have to try that then next time I, uh, yeah. I stop in there. Like a little orgasm in your mouth. And I, I, taste. and I personally, you know, I'm, uh, I enjoy the, the warm sandwich, the toasted sandwich, you know what I mean? And I don't know if it's just, you know, growing up, you know, you're a kid, you get uh, a cold lunch made, you know, for your, that your mom makes for you or whatever. When you're a kid, it's a, it's a sandwich, it's cold, it's from the free, you know, so that's what I associate that stuff with. I mean, I don't mind having a cold sandwich, but when I go for a Subway, a lot of times I'll get a meatball, a roast chicken, something like that that's warm anyway, you know, um, just because I, I personally prefer those, you know, if I'm going to. So I'm gonna well, pay for it. <laughs> is this just like open discussion now? Like, sandwich company is the best. Yeah, yeah sure, whatever. Right no, let's talk about sandwiches. Well, okay. Making me hungry. I, I'd have to go ahead and say, Jersey Mike's is by far the best. It's been around my area for like four years. Uh, Pop Bellies is also really good, but it is pretty pricey for the amount. All I have to say is Subway has its track record, but that's because they have it at like every like truck stop. So you they can't say really there's more Subways measure. than McDonald's in the U.S. It's I true. wouldn't you, doubt it, and especially through the last 15 years, they've been marketing and pushing that fat fuck Jared around. You know, it's at every uh, gas station. They don't have so. McDonald's is at a gas station, so it's like I think that's where they beat them out. Yeah, but I think you're right. Jimmy John's. I have a story about Jimmy John's. So I used to go to Jimmy John's. I used to work at Woodfield Mall, and I used to work retail. And it's either Sabaro or Jimmy John's. And I was like, oh man, I can't have pizza right now. Like, so I got the Jimmy John's. I loved the the Turkey Tom. It had alfalfa, you know, all that stuff. It was okay. But they had them opened here recently in the past year, and they stopped using alfalfa, which that was the that was the breaking point. They didn't yeah, have alfalfa. Yeah, that's the that's sprouts. the Turkey Tom signature, man. But now they have lettuce and cucumber, and I fucking hate cucumber on sandwiches. But uh, <laughs> I was like, well, what's the deal? And this guy's like, oh, no, we have, like, cucumber now. He, like, was kind of an idiot. 
And uh, so I go and I Google it one day. I'm like, why the fuck don't they have alfalfa now? I have to like find my new usual. And so I'm looking at it, and over the past four years, which I haven't had Jimmy John's in like three years, mind you, uh, until this point, and I look, and there's every year there was a salmonella, and then there was like an E. coli outbreak. <laughs> and then they're like, well, it's it, it tracked all the way back to the alfalfa and how like the alfalfa wasn't done properly, and it can you know host bacteria more. I'm just sitting there like, well, there goes my Jimmy John's. So I, I say Jimmy John's is dead last because they, instead of like solving the problem, they're just like, you know what, fuck alfalfa. <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly what like the CEO put in like a statement. He's like, we've determined that we're going with lettuce. We're not going to solve the problem. Maybe it's like, come on, man, like fix that shit. Yeah, you got to work so because here's the thing. Like you said, like it's not like. It's not a signature sandwich. Like they've got their set sandwich, like the Vito and the Turkey Tom and the whatever. And it's like people have expectations. Like one of the things that made the Turkey Tom, di in fact, I dare to say the only thing that made the Turkey Tom different from every other fucking turkey sub was the alfalfa sprouts. I mean, come yeah. on. You know, that's your token cucumber? black guy on the sandwich. That's your token black guy. Now, when you bite into it, it does that weird slidey thing that like lettuce and mayo have when they react. It's like it slides out the back, and you're like, <laughs> no. <laughs> My sandwich. And you until you've had alfalfa, it was like, okay, we'll take it. You know, there's no harm done. And until you've had alfalfa sprouts a few times, at least for me, my first few encounters were slightly horrifying. I was like, I don't know if I like this or not. And but then I, I learned that I did like it, and now I want I want it on all my sandwiches. They have spicy alfalfa. That's the best, but they don't have it anywhere. You need to you need to fucking figure out how to grow it. Now that you told me about it, I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. well, well, I'm not growing weed. I'm growing problem. spicy you just, alfalfa. Yeah, we just keep, bro. A, just keep a little baggie of it in your pocket and walk in, and you order the turkey tom, and you just hey man, you want some spicy alfalfa, bro? But the good thing about Jersey Mike's, even though it is pricier, uh, if you get like the monster, which is like what twelve or fifteen inches, like that, that's where you you get the deal. It's like ten fifty for like I think it's like fourteen inches, and you could. I have seven now, seven later in the day. The thing I feel differently, too, about, like, the independent sandwich shops by, like, where we went at Capri is, like, I don't know. I, it's the only other independent sandwich shop I've ever been to, so I can't really speak on behalf of all delis because I'm sure there's some really fucking shady ones out there. But, like, the quality of ingredients, to me, was night and day. Even things like their lettuce, you can notice, like, such a difference in the freshness. And, and I've never been one of those guys who's super palatable where, like, I can really detect, like, subtle differences but to me it's it's fucking it's super night and day like if i were to pay you know double digits for a sandwich like i feel like the only place i'd want to go is a place like capri it's so good it was just so good do you remember back uh, when we used to uh buy uh pick up seal coating at ray products local deli the place that we go to that was right across the street from ray products and they had like this tiny little counter up front and it was actually this place actually makes and ships out sandwiches uh, to put in like the wheel of death type sandwich machines all around the area you know oh really but they had like a little the area you could order up front and for like four or five bucks you could just get this badass it's the only place i could ever compare to like a capri because everything was just fresh made right in front of you there was a few polish ladies that could hardly spoke or spoke a lick of english yeah, but you know, but once you got past the language barrier uh, and they knew you and they knew what you liked, man, I mean, you'd watch them make the sandwich fresh right there for you. And I mean, it was it was just so so good. I mean, it was the best. You gotta and appreciate like, that. They had these really shady hours too. Like they were only open like ten to two Monday through Friday, and for like an hour on Saturday, but only it's the, the third Saturday of every yeah, other month. You it's know? the I don't give a fuck hours. Capri yeah. has those hours too. They they close at four on Sunday. Yeah, they close at well, six on care. Saturday. It's a family I enjoy, you know. And the thing is, too, is, like, they've got some of the so. best pizza around, and you can't fucking order pizza from them because they close at 6 o'clock. Like, it's, like, how can you order a pizza? And they do it, they do it because they can, because they're successful, and they can fucking, they, you know, fuck it, we're not going to work fucking 300 hours a week. We don't exactly. need to. We're successful. Now why sh yeah, exactly. Why should they? And that's what I talked to my wife about because uh, our viewers, again, who don't know, my wife and I own a business, and so we always kind of aspire to being the people who can be lazy and just, like, count money. Uh, <laughs> like, what well, a business owner doesn't want to be that. Um, I don't know, unless you're like fucking a weirdo or something like Steve Jobs where you actually want to do shit. But but for us, we want to aspire but to be lazy. Anyway, so that doesn't matter. Yeah, he's he's a dead motherfucker. But but yeah, like a Capri, like the product is so good. They were just on uh, Chicago's Best on that, that TV show. So like they like they're to to be this little like shithole fucking I don't know what is it, eight hundred square foot shop in the fucking suburbs of Chicago and like get picked up, like that's that's kind of a big deal, so the client, the client base has to be speaking for them. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. Well, if they're only open for four hours and you love it and you know what their hours are, you're going to have 20 people instead of going through a 12-hour window. They're going to make those four hours count. They're going to go right. and get that fucking sandwich. <laughs> I've Absolutely. always been I've always been fascinated by businesses that can intentionally kind of create that culture too, that that mystique that makes them more desirable. Like there's a uh, uh, Latuzic and I were at at a bar a few weeks ago talking to this girl who was a uh, our our server who was telling us about this place down in the city. And it's like super, super, super exclusive. It's like word of mouth only. It looks like a, a boarded up old building, but when you go in there, it's like this super elegant place and like not a lot of people know about it. I'm like, how can you afford to make that your business model? Like, how, I'm just curious how people do that because I know the capital took my wife and I to get our place going and we're still paying business loans that we probably will for a while, you know? So, <laughs> like, I couldn't afford to dump all this money into a place and be like, hey, make sure you don't fucking tell anyone about it because it's. We're really we we have a a select audience. Like I I don't even know, I don't even understand how you can build a business that way. You have to either have a lot of expertise or a ton of fucking money or maybe both. I don't know. It's just really good uh, really good marketing, I guess. <laughs> There's something. It's, it's, it's weird hipster, though. So. It is like a hipster thing. I don't know. Hey, real so, quick before we jump on to another topic, uh, a viewer of ours, a friend of mine that actually I wanted to have on the show, uh, his name is Chad Messer, uh, and he's been on actually every week with us here and uh, joined us, uh, watched us live, or uh, you know, watched obviously watched it afterwards. Ooh, anyway, um, Chad. yeah, like to like to have him on the show here uh, on an upcoming show next week or the week after. Tuned in a little bit late tonight. We got a late start anyway, but is now watching. I had to, I had to do a final and uh, wound up with a 92 on there. So I personally have not been in school uh, in a long time, but uh, I'm still, you know, I acknowledge that a 92 is very good. So hey, don't we have like a on. <laughs> Hold on, Chad. We got think, you, boy. I think we might have uh, some applause there. So I'm gonna figure out how to do that soon. No, it's my goal. No, I don't, I don't have it. <laughs> Damn. All right. Well, good job, golf Chad. That's good <laughs> golf clap. It's not it's not an Asian A, but... What's the Asian A? I don't know what the Asian the A is. The Asian grading scale is uh, anything below a 98 is uh, an F and everything above an A. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty accurate, though. <laughs> That's great. That's funny. Hey, there we go. Yeah. There we go. I found the effects on it. Anyway, the only reason that I mentioned it is because of the fact that, uh, like I said, I, I had invited him on to, to be a guest on a future show, and uh, you know, think that, that he'll definitely uh, add some uh, some fun fun things to some of our topics. So, just wanted to throw that on there before we moved on to our next topic. All right, nice. Chad. All right, who's got the next topic? Uh, we're just gonna go in order with which ones, because we kind of, or do we do we do Sean's first? It doesn't really matter. We can Dude, skip there's, everywhere. There's no rules. Let's go. Let's yeah. go to good, bad haircut story, Tim. Oh my God. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I have I have an array of these, but I kind of want to see what you guys have. Um, I don't want to go too far into it, but uh, I mean, just recently, I had this this one girl, and uh, I've had some horror stories. I've had some good ones. This girl's funny because um, we were talking about. Like, you know, you usually have that awkward conversation where it's like, oh, so what do you do? And I'm like, oh, well, I have like a, you know, I have a job. And she's like, oh, well, I do this. And you're like, oh, that's that's cool. So I've been going to sports clips more often, and it's cool because they remember your haircut. It's decently priced, and there's like a TV in front. So if you get that awkward conversation, you're like, oh, I'm just watching sports. And, you know, even though I don't know <laughs> shit about tennis, I'm like, oh, I fucking love Wimbledon. Uh but uh, you know, every single time I go in there recently, I'm just straight up. I'm straight up with them now, and I'm getting to know a lot of them. I'm just like, oh, so do you watch sports? And they always go, huh, no. I'm like, well, shit. <laughs> um, and I, th there's actually multiple stories, but this is a good story. Um, and I was the first. Okay, so <laughs> I was at work, mind you. My boss doesn't get into like 9:30, and so at, at like 8:45, I was like, fuck it. I'm getting a haircut from like 9 to 9:30. I'm just gonna like. I'm just going to clock out and go. I'm just going to my lunch. So I clocked out. I went. I showed up at like 8.55. I was the first one there. Like, they weren't even re they weren't even ready. They are like, holy shit. Like, you want to hurt them right now? A customer? I sit down <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they, they have uh, the price is right on. And I, I, they're like, oh, should we change? I'm like, do not change it. We're going to watch the price is right. And the two of you are going to talk to me like real people. We're not going to bullshit. Like, just cut my hair. The girl cut my hair beautifully. 
Um, the funniest part is, I don't know if you guys have watched The Prices Right, but we were just kind of bouncing off of each other, and this girl's like, yeah, they started, like, adding, you know, there's always, like, you know, the hot, like, middle-aged girl. It's like, ooh, look at this. I'm trying to get my hand in there so she can do it. Oh, look at this, uh, you know, <laughs> shitty car from five years ago that we're going to give to you if you win, or, you know, <laughs> we'll give you a new blender if you can, you know, up and down it or whatever. There, there's now guy ones on the show, and it's kind of awkward because uh, Drew Carey is the host, and it's kind of – I don't think he, like, handles it well. He's like, oh, so, you know, Dan, what is what does he win now? And there's just, like, this muscly guy, like, flexing and flex pointing. What the and fuck? This, this episode, I didn't believe her, and she's like, you know, sometimes they have guy epis- the guy ones, and then this really funny guy comes on. And then all of a sudden, they had, like, this woman on Days of Our Lives, which is, like, 50 seasons long. And she's like, I heard, Drew, I heard that you guys have male models now, but there's none today because there's a girl model. And uh, then all of a sudden, like, this curtain falls, and there's, like, all these prizes. And it was, like, every guy from, like, Days of Our Lives, like, shirtless. And I'm just like, you weren't kidding. Like, it was just, like, a big sausage fest in prizes, and it was super awkward. And then I was like, I kind of regretted staying on the Price is Right channel. But, <laughs> I well, wonder why they went that direction with it. I don't. I, maybe they're stay-at-home dads now. I'm so confused. Or you know, maybe the stay-at-home moms are finally like, all right, well, why do we have a chick if you know it's stay-at-home moms? Maybe they want to see the. They want to see. Yeah, they want to see a real sword fight. Yeah. And, uh, but I was just. I, I didn't believe her, and then I saw it. And I'm like, okay, well, uh, I'm just gonna like tip you and be on my merry way. See, I don't know that I have like a like a good experience story where I'm like, yeah, that was I was really satisfied with the service that I got. Um, but I do have one story which is a little crazy. Um, <laughs> there's there's a place near us. <laughs> I don't know internationally if they're a chain or not. I think they might be, but uh, um, it wasn't sport clips. It was great clips, and great clips had like to divide the stalls. They have like what looks like a, like a sail from a from like a little boat. Um, I think it was Great Clips, right? That had the that's sales. Great, that's Great Clips, yeah. Great Clips, and uh, I don't know. I must have been eleven or twelve when I went in there, and and uh, it was seven or eight o'clock at night. But it was just a couple of like the the ladies in the store, and I don't know. Maybe there's a couple of customers in there, but um, I go in there. Was and it in that like, strip mall? Was it a strip mall? Right, right, right. The Old Town, or what was it called? I forget. Anyway, no, it was right next. It was right next to Dominic's. Um, it was oh, that okay. one off of Dundee. And oh, okay, so okay, okay. I go, I go in there and I, I describe them like, hey, I, I want, I want a one on the sides and you know fade it up, and I want like the, you know this much on top or whatever. And uh, the, I don't know if it was a store manager, but this is black lady. She's like, no, that's not how we're doing your hair. <laughs> I'm like, my sister had just dropped me off, so I didn't have like my parents there to defend me. And I'm like 11, so like I'm not gonna say shit. You know, she just told me no. And I was like, okay, how, how do you want to do my hair? And she's like, <laughs> yo, listen, this is what we're doing with your hair. And she's got like, the freakishly long fucking nails. And I'm like, all right. So I'm sitting there, and like, a- as she's cutting my hair and clearly not doing what I want, because she left it very long, and, and I've got uh, kind of dewy, curly hair. It's very terrible. I need it short. She's, like, leaving it long. She's talking all this crazy shit to the girls beside beside her. And, like, every time she laughs, it's not a laugh. It's, like, a full fucking cackle. She puts, like, her head back, and it's, like, the like something you'd see on, like, a Tyler Perry show or, like, BET. It's, like, crazy. Like, it's, like, humor that I don't I don't understand what she's saying. It's, like, a bunch of inside jokes one after another. And, uh, and all of a sudden, she decides she needs to, like, pantomime this whole scenario that she's talking about, like, this crazy gibberish. And she goes running back and forth across the store with like scissors in one hand <laughs> and like her shit in the other, like raving this lunatic shit. And I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm sitting there like, I was uncomfortable before, but now I'm like, this is fucking next level. And like, and and then she slips, she slips, and she slides underneath those dividers, the like the sails, <laughs> like like goes under like three of them, and it's like pinned underneath one. And she's like, ah, ah, just like screaming, <laughs> laughing. It's like Eddie, it's like Eddie Murphy, like de- like as a demon entered into this woman and like and took control of her. It was it was the craziest like, it was the craziest thirty minutes of my life. And needless to say, when I got back in the car and my mom was like, what the fuck's wrong with your hair? I was like, <laughs> I explained it all to her. They called the store. It was like this whole big thing. But that was my one like weird story where like, 
I, I've never had an experience similar to that, uh, like a lady just going crazy and running around. So. And and that's why they don't. That's why they drug test uh, at at these at these uh, you know a lot of these these establishments, and, and they should. Um, because I had uh, at a similar place, I don't know if it was a Great Clips or the Hair Cuttery, it was uh, by the Dominics over there on Dundee Road in Palatine, and uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, sir, if you, you and uh, our brother Jordan were the ones that we had, we had gone with, and uh, we went to this place, and it was a Saturday night, and it was about 8, 8.30, 8.45, but I needed to get a haircut, and uh, you know, you're one of the last people of the night, and uh, anyway, long story short, is I wound up getting dry humped by a, uh, I don't know, maybe <laughs> mid to late 30s, uh, sort of beat up looking. Maybe she was a MILF at one point, you know, but at this point, I wouldn't have fucked her with a stolen dick, you know. And uh, she was drunk, too, mind you. So she sits down, <laughs> and, and she had cut my hair before, and she knew me because she had uh, cut my son's hair, and she thought he was adorable and everything else, and she knew that at the time I was, I was separated and everything. So... Anyway, I came in and uh, I sit down in a chair, and you can just smell the liquor on her. Smell like vodka, you know. And uh, and she's like talking to me, but she's talking and getting all up in my ear and shit and whispering, you know. She's like and, in your personal space. She's and you know, and you know how like they go and they turn you around, and then they try to you know get to you from a different angle or whatever. Well, she turns me around, and she like literally just like straddles my one leg, and I swear to God, she starts like, <laughs> fucking my leg while she's cutting my hair, right? And at one point, physically stops cutting my hair and kind of puts her arms around me with the scissors and everything. And I'm sitting there like, this is this is just not good. This is not, you know, this is not a proper establishment. You know, <laughs> I'm thinking in my mind, I'm never coming here again. I'm and pretty this sure is so embarrassing. Coach. You know, it's like, what, what do you want to do? You know, what are you going to do about that? Because there's still a few other people in the place, you know, and you're just hoping that somebody will notice what's going on, right? You know what I mean? And she's like whispering shit in my ear about how I should come back in the bathroom and everything with her. <laughs> And, uh, and I'm just trying to pretend like I couldn't hear anything, and I'm just praying to God that one of my brothers is going to notice this and rescue me from this fucking crazy-ass broad. You know? If we if we noticed anything, it probably would have been like, all right, hell yeah, like we had no idea what was going on. Yeah, and, but she, and she was uh, she, she was she was pretty beat up looking, though, you know. She was looked like she maybe got hit with a frying pan, you know, a few times or whatever. It looked like just, Sean. She was well, not, I was going to say, oh, I was gonna say oh. that could have been my cross-dressing day. She was not super attractive. <laughs> But you know what I mean? But it was really uncomfortable when she was, like I said, up on me like that. And you could just kind of feel her writhing and shaking and everything, you know. And uh, it was, I don't know if it was between the liquor. Maybe she had a uh, the cocaine addiction or something like that. But uh, whatever she was doing, she, she was having a good time with it. So um, anyway, uh, needless to say, I, I did not tip her well. Um, she, she wound up writing her phone number on my receipt anyway. No. And, uh, you know, it was, I never went back there for a haircut. As a matter of fact, I don't even going to that plaza anymore. That whole plaza, I just avoid. <laughs> no period. Hong Kong light. Because I don't, yeah, because I, I don't want to you know, so hang out with her over there. So it's, uh, it was, it was a bad, bad experience. All what about you, Shank? See, every one of my haircut experience is just awful because I hate talking to people. And it's just a fact that, you know, like uh, Yellow Bus was mentioning is, you know, they always try to have this small talk. And, uh, you know, uncomfortable for me, it's like, you know, I so happen to live in an area where my boss lives. And, um, you know, we're just sitting there talking. She's like, oh, so uh, where do you work? And I'm like, stop fucking talking to me. I don't want to talk to you because I fucking just want my hair cut and I want to go home. And I'm like, oh, I work here. And they're like, oh, do you know so-and-so? He says he's the district manager there. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's my boss. The nice part was that ended the total conversation that whole day and she never <laughs> talked to me again. Because <laughs> I think she felt that I didn't really want to talk about it. You know, I still go there, um, but you know, I try to vary days so I don't see the same girl all the time. But I just, yeah, it's I, a little awkward. Yeah, I mean, you I see the same I, person. Yeah, I go in. I just get my hair done like every two to three weeks, and I go in and it's like, uh, yeah, I want number one to the side. I want it kind of high and tight, and don't touch the top. And they're like, <laughs> I've never heard. I've never heard high and tight ever before. Seriously, I'm like, yeah, give me number one all the way around, uh, high and tight, and don't touch the top. And they're like, I don't know if I could do. That's, they say that in the Marines, isn't it? They say high and tight. Uh, it's like it's haircut, like you know what? Uh, and then she's military. like, well, it's gonna look like you, you. You know, I don't want to look like you have a bowl over your head. I'm like, bitch, it's not gonna look like I have a fucking bowl in my head. I get my hair cut like this every time. Why the fuck do I have to argue with someone every goddamn time? Just take the number one, go all the way up to where it starts balding. Go all the way around, okay? <laughs> shave, where it starts balding. Okay? Where it starts balding. Yeah, shave the shit. 
with the number one. Go ahead, even out the fucking sideburns, straighten the back, trim the eyebrows, and shut the fuck up for 12 minutes while you're doing it. That's all I, I want. High and tight. You got you, your hair's got to look like that guy from House Party. What was that black guy's name? <laughs> Kid, and <laughs> Kid and play. Kid and play. Kid and play. That's oh. funny. Oh, and they never God. fucking do it right. They're like, okay, and then they like they take it. And they take the fucking number one halfway up, and she's like, what do you think? I says, well, that's not where I fucking told you to go. <laughs> <laughs> and people it's, think that like Sean doesn't actually say this, but this is actually what Sean says to people. Well, seriously, and it's like. It's like, seriously, it's like, if I want it up to here. Like, I mean, I used to have years ago, I used to go to this Italian barber, and I'd go in there and say, hey, I want it no, up to here all the way around, number one. And the guy would be like, okay, my friend, I'll go ahead and do it. And it's like, <laughs> it's done. It's fine. No, these fucking 23, 24-year-old bitches, you know, um, you know, it's the only reason I go there is because, you know, I do get, you know, boobs rubbed on me, and they're, they're not awful-looking chicks. I mean, <laughs> they're not they're not white material, but, I mean, you well, know, sometimes you throw them a bone, and they'll be fine. But yeah, they're dumb as a box of rocks, man. You know, you can, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and it's just I mean, the fact that when I go in and if I say, here, number one all the way around high and tight, and then you start doing number one half-ass up, and then you want to fucking, ooh, how about a number two? No, I don't fucking say number two. <laughs> You gotta go number two, go shit in the fucking toilet, come back and finish my fucking air number one. <laughs> Seriously. It's frustrating. Every time, and it's never, they always, there's always something. Oh, I don't know. Like last time, I go in and I always get my eyebrows trimmed because the poor, the stupid old Italian guy who used to do a nice job on my hair one time trim my eyebrows, okay? Never let a fucking anyone trim your eyebrows because once your eyebrows are no. trimmed, then it's a fucking disaster. Okay? I hear you got, you should get them threaded. Yeah, yeah threaded by Napoli's go, Pizza. They have a they have some some nice that's Indian where, ladies that my wife in minutes. Them, yeah. I don't know, but it's like last time I went in there, I'm like, oh, can you go ahead and trim my eyebrows? And she's like, do you wax? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like offended. She's like, you've got great shape. I'm like, I mean, I couldn't even talk to her anymore because I honestly felt like nothing against it, but, but I felt like you know I. Felt a little gay, and then I heard that you know it's very, it's it's very metrosexual. I do not wax my eyebrows. I have thin, I have thin, well well managed eyebrows, so I never I never need to fucking thread them because if I well, did, I never I, thread I them. I don't no do eyebrows. anything. But she's like, oh, your your shape is so great. I wish I had that shape. Well, because bitches shave it off and then just fucking draw on with a pencil. No. I uh, I stopped going into those those chain places oh, several years ago just because of the inconsistencies. And uh, a few years ago, when we moved back out here from Michigan, I found a, a little joint uh, called Leo's Barbershop. And it's this uh, Mediterranean guy. Um, I forget what his exact nationality is, but it's the one that Adam Sandler's making fun of in that uh, Don't Mess With the Zohan. Uh, it's what they're all supposed to be from. Um and, uh, and it's a great little place you get. It's like six ninety five for a haircut. The guy's like an old school barber. And the great thing is, is he doesn't really talk to you much. Like usually he's got he's got the TV on in the background and he's like so interested in what's going on in the news or whatever else it is that's on TV that he hardly says two words to you. And he's got a thick accent anyway, so you don't really have to make a lot of small talk with him. And he does a fantastic job, you know, so much so that you want to give the guy a good tip. You know, he's consistent, remembers what's going on, you know, every time you come in, you don't got to tell him shit. And, uh, I, need to, I, I, I need to go there because, like, I five found... Five bucks for kids' haircuts, too, man. And, oh, I mean, they're shit. real good, too. They do eyebrow threading. His wife does there. They got a, His father-in-law, I think it is, works there as well. We take... The whole family goes there. Even Dad goes there now, too. You know, great place. And right down the road, right right down the street from the courthouse on Wilkie. Um, no shit. Yeah, yeah so. I'm going to have I'm gonna have to check that out. The, Jordan uh, used to go there, as a matter of fact, but until, he, until he moved. Uh, you know, I told him about the place or whatever. But where, where else can you go get a nice $7 haircut? You know, and I mean... The guy does a professional job, man. Afterwards, he hits you with a straight razor and lines your shit up and everything for you. Nice. you know? So it's pretty That's nice, man. Can do it, man. So it's pretty, like I said, pretty nice, man. You know, you know, it just entered my head. Um, I do have one other haircut story. When we were on vacation, and I, again, I was like twelve. It must have been within like the same year or two years. But uh, it was a bad year. Uh, my brother and I met these uh, two. My brother and I met these two older chicks on the beach. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I remember this story. And they cut your hair? Yeah, that was basically the deal. Basically, make a long story short, they were a few years older than us. I thought I was going to get my, my dick wet, my shushu wet. So I was like, we were sitting at their house. And um, it was like that, that thing where like my brother and I were kind of like expecting 
to have sex with them. <laughs> so we were just sitting there waiting for this to happen. Hope to at least get a blowjob. Yeah, totally. And, uh, you know, my, my, my 12 year old self, that's all I fucking thought about. I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's a little young, but I don't know. I had older brothers, so I knew I knew where everything went. And, uh,. So this is what I'm anticipating, Whoa. and it's just kind of... What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I don't know where everything went because they showed me. <laughs> um, like, in, like in Sean's childhood. But uh, but anyway, so we're oh. sitting around watching TV, and the one chick turns to me, and she's like, do you ever do anything crazy? And I'm like, fuck yeah, all the time, like trying to impress her. She's like, can I just shave your head right now? And I'm like, yeah, why not? Like, I was gonna, I was going to shave it anyways, you know, like... Didn't think a big deal because we always did that at home with like the clippers and shit. So like we we go out on her porch and I, I'm sitting there and they put like a towel over me or whatever and all of a sudden she's like lathering my head with like shaving cream. And I'm like okay maybe it's a fucking that's a different way of doing it but like whatever. And and then she comes out with scissors and just starts ho hawking off like hunks of my hair and then tries to take like a bic and like and shave my fucking head. Long story short, oh. like my hair was completely. It was so, it's so fu it was so fucked up you can't really even describe it. It was like an inch here, completely bald here, like it just everywhere. It was so patchy. I look like a dog with mange. Did what you it at least get a to. hand job? No, I got nothing. After that all that, awful. it was terrible. Like the Sarah McLachlan Jordan... commercial, or they're just like shivering and there's no sense. Then Jordan, my brother, like recognizes that he's gonna like catch some shit for this because he let his little brother fucking do something so stupid. So then he steps in and tries to fucking fix it. It was terrible. I tied a shirt over my head. I walked back to the house, and then when I finally fucking took it off, my dad was like, "What the fuck? He was so pissed off about it." Everybody was really pissed off about it. But I look back on that, like, and as a parent now, like, if that was Brad, I'd be like, "Yep, your fault. You're a moron. You know what? You're gonna wear it for the rest of vacation because I think that's funny." Like, I, they were so distraught about it. It's like it's my hair. Like, it'll fucking grow back. I don't know. Yeah, fucking damn straight. It'll grow back. Yeah, dude, what the fuck, you know? Especially if you're fucking young. Who the hell cares, man? Seriously, yeah. look at it, man. When you're fucking young and, like, when I was younger, you know, it was cool to have, like, the longer hair, like, the fucking mullets, and it was fucking cool to have a tail. Now I look at it now and say, Jesus Christ. You know, I look at pictures, and well, I don't look at pictures anymore because I burnt them all, so there's no proof, but it's like, what is so cool about having a fucking three-inch strand of hair longer than anything else? Dude, the, the little rat tails were still around when uh, Yellow Bus and I were in school. Both of our kindergarten pictures, no we, we've got uh, we've got rat tails. Well, dude, I, could, I had like the rat tail that I can fucking take and I could fucking put in my mouth and come to the opposite side. That's how long the shit was. I was like, do a little mustache. Cool. Yeah, and it's like that was fucking cool. I guess I was a cool seventh grader, at least in my own mind, I was. I don't like yeah, was... to. I don't like to be. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, when I uh, was nice enough to give Tom a job at where I work, uh, <laughs> this fucking douchebag, they're like, oh, tell us something interesting about yourself. And then Tom, you know, sitting there is like super unoriginal Tom. He's like, oh, well. And then my boss is like, or you can just call Tim out on something. And he's like, Tim had a rat tail from fifth to sixth grade. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's laughing, and, and to this day, people are like, "Oh, the red tail!" Like every once in a while, like every like quarter, one person will be like, "Oh, remember that red tail story?" I'm like, no. See, but then you just come back at Tom with a hair joke, because he doesn't have any. Yeah, it's cruel. It's a low blow, but hey, you, you dish it right fucking back. Hey, a blow's a blow, man. Blow's a blow. You who, cares? Cares? who cares if she's got a penis? Seriously, it was a blow. <laughs> I don't know how else to respond to that other than by saying queef. <laughs> queef, queef. But I just I just watched that South Park episode, uh, the queefing. Well, since we're talking about South Park, why don't we jump that into the next uh, topic? Ding, 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 ding. What Geniuses is or topic? morons? Geniuses or morons? Both. I l explain. I yes. think they're both. I mean, I think they're... they're they're absolute morons for everything they do, but it, it also they're geniuses too. I mean, I watched the uh, the Netflix thing where they you know they do an episode in in six days. I mean, for that, I look at them as what they put together is genius. But for doing it in six days, they're morons. They don't have to do it in six days. True. Why not do it in seven? Why not do it in fourteen and still be current? That's yeah. why they're morons. They they put all the pressure on themselves. To uh, you know, and they all get worried. I'm sure it's like that every week. Why you don't? They don't need to. 
Yeah, like I would like to see them take a little more time because if you look in the earlier seasons, I think the content was better too because they weren't doing them in a week. You know, like I think they got to that week pace pr pretty quickly, um, but the content before that was different. I s I find now that like anything after season like five or six, every like every third or fourth episode I really like, um, but like there's always like between like you know two two. Two to as many four episodes um, in a row where you're just like, eh, yeah, like I, I chuckled a couple times, but... Well, to kind of go on, I think what you're getting at right now is a good comment or a good point that uh, actually uh, Tom, which uh, if anyone watching, he's the guy that did the 40 hands with me and he kind of got screwed up, but uh, he actually had a good point when he was sober, uh, but he had a point to where there, there was, I don't know what season and he couldn't really remember either. But, you know, all of a sudden, they stopped being portrayed as, like, the children. You know, it was fun because in the earlier seasons, probably the first, like, six or seven, it was, like, funny because they were still children. They still acted like children. The dialogue was still, like, naive, not really understanding of the world. And now it's, like, all of a sudden, even though their characters haven't grown up at all, they're still the same age, just like every cartoon series. They all of a sudden have like this this new consciousness of the world, and they have these, you know, crazy things that that you know the wrap ups to where they're like, o only someone that's like an adult could truly be able to fully grasp that. You know, when it, when it was the children thing, you know, you know Casa Bonita, like they want to go to this shitty Mexican restaurant because they had you know all these dumb little things, and now it's like they're trying to do all these pressing issues and trying to have like this adult point of view from the children. You know, the thing that's hard is character development with something like that because to me though personally like I think some of the comedy comes from them being kids, but I wouldn't want to be seeing it still like that like them if they were still pretending like they were naive by this point, I think that would be like an old joke too, you know? Like I think a lot of the comedy came from that child thing, but it's yeah. like how do you, how do you develop a character then? Like I don't know. It, it's 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 weird. Like it has it has changed directions in that way. But I kind of like how because I do a show a week that like if you saw something on the fucking news last night, you you know you you could see it on South Park next week, which is cool. I think that's really funny. I like that about the show. Stays very current. Stays very fresh. So Latuza, what do you think? South Park geniuses or morons? Um, I think I'm in the genius camp on, on that only because of the fact that, uh, I mean, I, I got with them from the beginning, uh, a good friend of mine, um, uh, by, by the name of Bob Sabados, um, all of a sudden told me one, you know, one day we, we worked together and, uh, yeah, we, we collected comics and shit, hung out all the time. But anyway, I saw him and he said, I just saw the show on Comedy Central last night, South Park, man, it's, it's fucking hilarious and you got to watch it. So anyway, for the next two or three years, I think it was, we pretty much, that was like a weekly thing whenever it was on. Um, you know, we'd have a group that would get together, we'd watch it, we'd, uh, you know, probably get a little bit uh, high or drunk. And, um, you know, it was even more entertaining. But uh, for it to stay, I thought it was going to fade away after, you know, after a few years, because honestly, I kind of got off after a few years, got off the train. And um, to see that they're still putting out, you know, uh, shows and that they're still good because I, I think I mentioned this last week and I don't know if I did in the show or when we were talking beforehand, but, um, even till this day, 15 years later or whatever it is, I, you know, I'll throw a show on and it's still funny. It's uh, it is relevant. It's, you know, things that are up to date now. And, um, and then, yeah, as a matter of fact, we were talking about it last week cause we talked about, uh, uh the book of Mormon, you know, mm -hmm. which, which they wound up writing it. So, I mean, that's yeah, absolute, you know, like I said, I, I think I, I'm in the genius camp on that one. What I like, yeah. what I like about them too, and they mentioned this in the documentary, is like, not not many shows, um, write, direct, produce, star in, do all the voices from beginning to end, all you know, two, I mean, three hundred plus episodes or whatever they have, um, and still with all this fame and acclaim, maintain this outsider status because they have no allegiance to anyone, and it really is just them too. Like they they probably turn over staff. Uh, maybe they don't turn over staff really regularly now, but uh, I'm sure in the early days, like they've talked about how like they just don't have any friends in the industry. And it's like it's literally just like two best friends, and they say fuck you to everyone. Like, how do you, I, I don't think many people could do that. I don't think many people could like 
you know, not for video that, like, game deals, own, movies, like, you know, yeah. I mean, stage, Broadway plays. Like, there, there's been no limit of opportunity for them to take these characters wherever they want to, and and none of it, not even a, not not any of it, has changed them even a little bit. There's still those same two kids from you know from Colorado, and I think that's that's a really cool thing. Like, I don't know, I think that says something about their friendship because they are still like fuck Hollywood, you know? I think that's a, kind yeah. of a cool thing. And I think with anything, it's hard to be relevant, funny, entertaining, whatever the case is, once you get to a certain point. I mean, you take any TV show that's out there that's had its had its time for more than four or five, six seasons, it just starts to get old. Some yeah. of the plots start to get rehashed. If it's, uh, if it's geared more towards comedy, eventually, I mean, eventually you start pushing too hard. It's natural. You just do it. You push too hard for the character to make these types of jokes or whatever and they just become not relevant not funny and you, if people feel that you're just trying too hard so to sustain it for that long of, of a period of time I think is, is really profound you know and that's that is uh, that, true that's, even know, since starting like YouTube I never it's oh shit man I give like content creators so much more credit than I ever used to because it is weird how like it's it's easy when when it's new and you've got all these ideas bubbling not so easy after you know, the freshness um, isn't so fresh. <laughs> like, you know, all of a sudden it's like you are you are thinking about things differently. And uh, I can't imagine being funny in that way, like every single week. Like even just even just writing the dialogue for the show. Like, yeah, it's it's only it's only twenty two minutes of airtime, but twenty two minutes of dialogue, that's that's still that's two solid days straight at the computer. Like it just is, you know, like but people don't get that. People don't think about that. And then have to not just write dialogue but like try and be funny at the same time like you know I think that's uh, that's that's a rare talent yeah absolutely and like I said I, I think anybody can be a one hit wonder and can do it for a short period of time uh, you know with a cartoon maybe a season um, you know with a particular you know particular show like I said a lot of times you see them peak after two three seasons but uh, you know to, to still be that funny that relevant and uh and a lot of people too. I mean, you know, they they start out doing it because it's fun, but then ultimately they get the big contract or they get, you know, they're getting paid so much and, and they got royalties coming in that a lot of times they just kind of let it, you know, let it go. I mean, you look at George Lucas. Was he a genius for creating Star Wars and the universe behind it? Sure, but is he a schmuck prick motherfucker for going and just let it die? I mean, he, he's done nothing over the last twenty, thirty years except for milk and re-release the same old shit over and over again. You know, because it was something where he had all this genius behind it, but that once the, the money started rolling in, I guess he just doesn't have that heart and that incentive to want to do anything else with it and to actually fill that universe with, you know, with what, you know, with, I mean, with other stories that are out there, the infinite possibilities. Whereas, you know, with these guys, it seems like they still love what they're doing because it does, doesn't seem like the money's gone to their head. I mean, clearly they don't need to do this anymore, you know, but it still seems like it's something that they enjoy and that they love. I mean, and especially, too, when they do. But I think ninety percent of the voices, you know, in the short, they right. do all of them. I don't even know. I know that it's uh, they, they a, do a most of them, yeah. Not all, uh, they they do it. most okay. of them. That's what I had thought. But uh, but yeah, back to the to that uh, Star Wars thing though too. Like and with him not having passion, he just recently sold to, to Disney, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah he for did. a buttload of money, yeah. And, and thank God he did because he hasn't been doing anything with the franchise for all these years. Everybody said about how it's blasphemy and all the shit I saw on Facebook from all the nerds. And I used to be one of those people, you know. And it was all the original trilogy and this and that. You know, listen, man. It was great at its time and it was like anything. It was like Bioshock. It was a wonderful feeling of ambiance that drew you in in the atmosphere because it was the first time you had seen it. So Star Wars was the same thing. Nobody had been doing anything like it before, and it was just this great, large, profound world that was not ours, you know, and it was something to latch onto and grab onto. He didn't evolve it, though, after that, I don't think. And, you know, they're talking about, well, J.J. Abrams is going to direct the next one, and, and, and there's been rumors Shia LaBeouf That's may awesome. play this and that, and it. you know what? Hey, listen, man. I don't really care at this point. I mean, I was like, I would've been excited to see the Star Wars Clone Wars uh, uh, show. I don't know if anybody watches that, the cartoon on Cartoon Network. It's actually pretty good. Um, but that's the only thing that I've really seen good come out of that that camp in the last 20, 30 years. You know, so at least Disney's going to do something with the license. You know, <laughs> so. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, why would you pay that much money for the license and not do something? No, it's with good. It. Get a breath of fresh air. What's that? I don't know, Timmy. Oh, uh, yellow bus, you were roboting and roboting. Yeah, I heard something about. I heard think I heard bring up, and that's all I really got. Sorry. No, it's okay. Well, I was just saying it's it's good, you know, to get a breath of fresh air. Sometimes, sometimes someone's just kind of like 
going through it, the motions and they need some kind of new group to come in. You know, we have Halo, we had you know, Star Wars now, Bioshock 2 to Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, sometimes a, a, a fresh perspective, you know, to kind of refresh it is, is a good thing, you know, and I guess we'll we'll see what happens. I guess they're not going to start filming uh, until 2014 is what I read, I think, yesterday or today. So. For, the, yeah. for the new one? Yeah, yeah, I think I heard something along those lines, but like I said, something in my opinion will be better than what we've been getting, which is nothing, okay? I, you know, I have bought and rebought the Star Wars trilogy in so many different formats now. It's ridiculous. I mean, we went from VHS to VHS special editions to VHS, VHS tapes with the THX remastered sound in the special editions. And then once we went over to DVD, I had a couple different sets of that, and then bought them on Blu-ray. Now they're remastering them and remaking them for 3D. You know, so, you know, do something new. You know, it's a great big universe out there with a lot of stories to tell, you know. <laughs> so, uh, Who told me, was it you, Shank, about, about uh, Firefly and Netflix? Oh, uh, yeah, I read that. I read that at your house that they were talking about Netflix was thinking about... Um, Restarting Firefly, but they're not going to do it. I think it was a financial thing that they're not going to go. Ahead. Dude, that show has had so many like <gasps> moments oh, where like it's it's going to come back, and then it so fucking much it doesn't. Potential. That's another, and you know what that is? Is that that's that's somebody that had all this creativity. You know, Joss Whedon was able to create this universe and this and this language. That I they love spoke, Firefly, dude, and I just this it. sci-fi western type feel to it. And just the feel of it, it only lasted a season, Tim, but, I mean, it's just a, just a quality show just like through Jerica. and through. You know, um, and as a matter of fact, I've signed up for Netflix now, um, and I'm going to start watching Jericho uh, come week's end over here. Come week's end, yes, thank you, thank you. And <laughs> on that note, too, I meant, I meant to mention this last couple of weeks because Tim had been pushing Jericho, and obviously it's kind of got that end-of-the-world scenario to it. If you have a chance, there's two seasons out so far. There are only ten episodes each season, and the third one will premiere on TNT uh, June 9th, I believe, but it's a show called Falling Skies. Uh, it takes place, and, and the show picks up. It's after there's been an alien invasion. And uh, these aliens have pretty much wiped out the majority of, uh, they've pretty much wiped out our, you know, Air Force, you know, uh, all the resistance um, that would come from Army, Navy, that sort of thing. And there's just pockets of resistance fighters. It's that, it's that end of the world sort of scenario. It's that how do you live and raise your kids and develop a family and bring a new child into a world that is uncertain. You know where you're constantly running from, you know this enemy that's overwhelming. So real I cool I show. Saw, I saw commercials for that or something. Real good quality show. Uh, first two seasons are probably on Netflix, um, and uh, and if they're not, you can borrow them from me because I had actually picked them up months ago on DVD and um, and watched them. And, and like I said, we're eagerly anticipating the third season to premiere next month. So it's a, huh. a, a good watch. And uh, you know, as I said, short seasons, ten episodes. So nothing. Yeah, I'd like think. to check that out. I um. I'm just still so like pissed it off just started, that, right? Fire, that Firefly almost had a fucking chance, and it's and it's still and it's still getting kicked while it's down. Like it just pisses me off, dude. Well, and you know, for a couple of years, Bethesda uh, was actually they they made um, uh, what I'm escaping me now. Fallout Three, they did uh, Skyrim. Um, yeah. You know, some of these other popular RPGs. They actually bought the 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 rights and the licensing and started developing and wound up scrapping it after two years of development, an MMO that was based around Firefly and the Firefly universe, you know, so a massive multiplayer on like a World of Warcraft type of yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. I don't personally play those, um, but, you know, I, I've heard that there's a lot, you know, a lot to them and everything, and I think that's one of those uh, unexplored universes that they could have done, you know, real well doing something like that in there. Uh, yeah, I would love to see that. Like the, the my my first impression of Firefly, I didn't like. I, I saw the pilot, and then I think it was like maybe two or three months later when I decided to watch a second episode. And I don't know if I was sick or just laying around the house or something, but I was like, eh, I still didn't like even after two episodes of it. I was like, eh, whatever. Like I, I my life would be no different if the show wasn't in it. But for shiggles, I, I watched the third episode, and like something happened after the third episode where it was just like, okay, okay. I am picking up what you're putting down. And by the fourth episode I was totally fucking hooked. Unfortunately, how many episodes are in the season? There was only, I think there was only like maybe a dozen or something like that. It was it was very so like, short lived, you know. The the, the other two thirds of my experience was very positive and I loved it. Um and then it caused me after I saw those episodes to like rewatch the season and then watch the, the half ass movie. Um 
And you know what that was? It was just yeah. a tip. It was an example of, unfortunately, it was, it was all about the money. I mean, even it was on sci-fi. And what happened is sci-fi just is, especially at the time, this is going back 10 years ago now, was kind of a fledgling cable channel. Didn't have a lot of the popularity, um, you know, that some of these other channels have, like an AMC and, you know, that sort of thing with The Walking Dead. And, uh, and it really just it came down to they didn't advertise and market it well enough because they didn't have the budget for it. And it had a cult following, but um, it just wasn't a big enough you know fan base for them to warrant you know making any more episodes. You know, I mean, obviously it was a science fiction uh, type stuff, so there was a lot of special effects. And um, I guess you know that's big budget, so it boiled down to money. You know, and uh, so Joss Whedon basically took his idea to the wrong company, is what happened. You know, with, with that show. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point, dude. Yeah. But yeah, I suggest for anyone who hasn't seen it, especially uh, Yellow Bus and uh, and yeah, Shank, if you get a out. chance, check it out, man. It's definitely, uh, I don't know, it's just quirky. It's got its own flavor. You know, I really like that about about the series. Is it's just kind of like it's not like every other sci-fi thing, which I think is cool. And the the best way I think I can have of comparing it to is that some shows are written with a show in my start, a beginning and end, some characters, whatever the case is, and then everything else is filled in afterwards, the backstory, the where they are, what time period they're in, that sort of thing. This show was written and developed and was written as its a universe. I mean, they kind of have their own lingo, their own language and those sort of things. So the character development is is there from the beginning to, you know, all the way to the end, which is was very short lived. But you really feel like you like the character characters in the world that they inhabit. You know what I mean? It's not like a show that's just very hollow and it was really just written for this specific set of two or three starring characters and there's a few backup roles, you know. Everybody has their their place and um and it was just just very well done, you know, overall. Uh, the so. thing that threw that threw me off about that show too that you guys will see when you watch it is like the humor is very um it's cheesy. It's but like you have to get used to like it just threw me off. Like I didn't know if they were trying to go for the whole show to be cheesy, um, because the hum like when the humor comes through, it's just it's I don't know how else to say it. It's just like, it's kind of fucking corny. Sci sci fi but, humor. But it's part of the charm of the show later on. Like at first, I threw me for a loop. I was like, I didn't know if they were trying to make everything sort of like satirical, you know. Um, to be honest, in the pilot. Part of it was the graphics. I was like, "Are you fucking serious?" I was supposed to take the show serious. Like, I thought it was kind of thought it was a little bit of a joke. <laughs> like, I don't know if it was part of the humor or not. <laughs> well, um, you know, I mean, I think the graphics cable, are much better channel, from like, the uh, people channel uh, side, you know, special effects budgets probably not. Yeah, totally. Not real, real big, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but uh, but yeah. So okay. Well, anyways, enough of me talking about Firefly because especially because we don't <laughs> we don't all know about it. Um, what other uh, what other topics you guys w want to broach? Now wait, Jusek, you just saw Iron Man three, right? Because that's we on the did. Topic list. Yeah, we did. We took that, we saw that? we took the family to see that on Saturday. And as a matter of fact, uh, we had a little bit of uh, an issue with our babysitter slash live in house guest, and uh, he had himself a little two year old temper tantrum and stormed out of the house. And he was supposed to watch our um, he's not two yet, but uh, our fifteen month old. Yeah, because he's just an absolute uh, train wreck to take to theaters these last few months. So uh, I'd already bought the tickets, and um, we were going to see it, and it was going to be in 3D. And I said, what the fuck, let's go, man, you know, and um, just braced myself for what I thought was going to be two hours and 20 minutes of hell. And uh, he wound up being real good, though. He's uh, He you know eats regular food now, so he was excited to go, and, and he had his you know juice bottle and bought it, brought his little can of uh, these little puff things, you know, that uh, the kids eat or whatever, and he has some Reese's Pieces and stuff, too. And then after about an hour, um, we wound up actually passing out, which was great. So the movie itself, though, I thought was really good. Um, maybe the best in the series. You know, I really enjoyed the first one. thought the second one lacked a lot in action and polish and story. And the second one I thought just sucked. Just about everything else. Yeah, I, I wasn't a fan. This one was cool. Uh, I wish I would have seen a little more of the Iron Man itself you know as far as him running because when i go to pay to see iron man or the hulk like i don't want to see bruce banner sitting around like figuring out these conundrums and puzzles okay like i want to see him get fucking mad and turn into a giant green rage monster and like throw cars through buildings okay that's what i'm paying to see <laughs> so, so iron man i want to see what kind of new suit he has what kind of blaster he's got what kind you know and fighting some equally badass super villain you know yeah, it's and, all about the action. It's not like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and and although Robert Downey Jr. is a perfect fit to play Tony Stark because his real-life experiences, he's even said, are comparable to what Tony Stark's character is supposed to be, this billionaire that has all this money 
and basically is an alcoholic, like a functioning, raging, alcoholic genius, you know, inventor type person. And uh, so, there, so all that stuff is really good, all the fill-in stuff. It's not boring, you know what I mean? It's not like a normal, you know, dramatic type stuff that they try to put in these movies that, that's, that's really lacking because of the actor. I mean, he does a great job. He's funny. He's got good chemistry. But I just, I found that the last half an hour was like the best part, you know, of the movie. And I, and I, mean, I guess that can be said for a lot of action movies. They're going to throw the giant scene at the end. But there wasn't a ton going on, you know, before that to really draw you in. It was yeah. good in 3D, but it was one of those movies that I think uh, there was no gimmicky 3D special effects. So I think you, you know, I think you're not missing out if you see it in, in regular, you know, 2D or whatever. Um, you know, but overall, I thought it was pretty good, and they set it up for the um, the second Avengers movie, which will be coming out uh, next year, I believe, and. Um, and then they also showed a preview for an, uh, a new Wolverine movie that's actually coming out in July that I didn't even know mm -hmm. about. So I haven't seen like a, a, any of these movies. I did see Iron Man two, and I was disappointed by it. And I was wondering if Iron Man three was the same way. And it's it sounds. I think it was good. Like, I think they did a nice job of getting back on the you know getting back on the horse with things. Like I said, what if you know if I have any complaint, it'd be just maybe a little more action. You know. Yeah. Um, but uh, but overall, I think it was it was definitely a thumbs up. You know, well, one Winter was really good, right? One was good. I saw one, I and then one two. I heard was bad. Yeah, one was. Avengers. Really he stole the show. So I mean, like, I got jacked up to watch two and three. Just you know. Yeah, Avengers I, I was so well written, though. The, the guy who wrote Avengers and directed it, Josh. I never Wheaton, watched it, that. It, 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 you should see that Josh Whedon, awesome. the guy who did Firefly that we just talked about. For yeah, years. yeah. He's also the guy who wrote and directed the ten seasons of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. You know, now I was never a fan of the show. My wife loved and it. And he also did the screenplay for Toy Story. He did the screenplay for Toy Story. So he has been all over the board with, with a lot of different stuff. But uh, Avengers, though, was uh, one of the top grossing films of all time. Um, so he, and, and he did a nice job on it. I mean, he took these, you know, uh, pretty big actors and put them all together. And, I mean, they were just, they, they worked well together. It was funny. It was entertaining. You know, the story was good. So... Yeah, I'll you're missing out that. though. You should, especially with Brad, because he'll like all that stuff. We should do a, uh, you know, even if it's once a month, you know, get together and because uh, I have all those movies, and of course I have kids too, and they they like them, so you know, it'd be a, it'd be a oh, fun yeah, time dude. to kind of catch up on some of your Marvel stuff, which Disney also owns, by the way. Disney bought Marvel a couple of years ago. So we didn't talk about this last week, but you you had uh, something on that. Now, aren't they releasing like 14 films or something, or what was what's the deal? Uh, it's like eight films uh, between this year and next year that are all you know based on their various franchises. Uh, of course, you have Iron Man 3, you've got Thor 2 later this year, Captain America 2, Avengers 2, um, there's another X-Men movie coming out, the Wolverine one this July. Um, there's, there, there, there's a ton of them coming out. I'm trying to think. There's uh, one or two other ones that uh, yeah, there's another Spider-Man movie next summer, and um, you know, with the new kid from the from the reboot that that came out last year or whatever. I don't know. I mean, my question was, is, is it too much? You know what I mean? It's I and it, trust me, I'm an old school comic book nerd. Loved reading comic books. You know, uh, with the art stuff. You know, always wanted to draw them and that sort of thing. So I mean, I followed a lot of these characters. Uh, you know, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, and always wondered what it'd be like if they made big screen. You know, movies. And as obviously the technologies come along, it makes it so these movies can be great. And I think some of them are, and I think some of them are just. You know, I could have done without that. You know, yeah. so like I'm, you know what I mean? I'm no better or worse for having seen it. So yeah, I don't know. You guys got any opinions on that though? Uh, I, think I think as long as milking I, it. Well, I, they are milking. Gotcha. I think it's kind of. I mean, like what well, they got? They got Ant Man coming out. I don't know who the fuck Ant Man is. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, they've got a movie out with him. I, I mean, I understand when you have Spider-Man, yeah. you have Batman, you have Superman. When you take the major superheroes, I mean, seriously, who the fuck is that man? I mean, maybe I'm naive, but I mean, no, I you're know not, who the fuck no. Ant-Man is. No, you're not. I mean, I was a, a comic book nerd, and Ant-Man was, you know, was always kind of a background, backup, you know, half-assed Avenger, you know. that. Uh, well, I mean, it's like... It's really like appealing to me. If, if the movies are good, which, you know, most of the movies I've seen, you know, at least... Are, are decent. You know, I wouldn't say any of them are, are awful, but I mean, you know, you're going to get to the point where they're going to start sucking because you're going to run out of fucking ideas. You can only do so much. Well, and the problem is, too, is that Hollywood, too, you know, they don't have a, a new idea in, in, at, at all, you know, collectively. I mean, there's just no new IPs coming out at all. 
in movies or games, hardly anyway. So a lot of times it's going to basically be, you know, we're just going to we're just going to run this one into the ground. I mean, as long as it's making a positive cash flow for us, we're going to go and pimp out a sequel every, you know, two to three years. I just think that now it might be getting to be a little bit much because uh, I don't even know. I, I'm not a person that's since then it does a lot of budgeting, but I probably spend way too much money. And I have kids, so obviously I'm taking them to the movies and that stuff. It's a fun family thing, but you know, uh, uh, Disney is getting a ton of my money. I mean, between Pixar and Marvel, now they own Lucasfilm. Disney you know. and Comcast own the world. I'm serious, yeah, I'm seriously <laughs> fucked. And Walt would roll over in his grave if he knew what was going on now. But uh, you know. Let's think of it like this, though. If if okay, we we kind of were a comic generation, right? With these Marvel and DC, you know, we spent let's say there's a hundred comics, you know, for one particular person, we spent three dollars a comic, whatever it might be. At least now it's like okay, well, I can like take my kid here, spend the thirteen dollars in three D, and you know, package this this you know hundred comics up in one little. A little present. Yeah, that's kind of neat. I'll, I'll give you that. And I, I'm not one of those people that's a purist where I get upset if they don't keep it exactly as the source material was in the comics because, you know, comics are like soap operas, man. They reinvented and relaunched and, you know, oh, this you know, Superman died and then he went to an alternate universe and somebody else went back in time and saved him, you know, and that type of shit. So I can wrap my mind around it and, you know, it is kind of cool, I think, from that, that aspect, you know. Um, and it's kind of neat being able to sit down and then talk with, you know, my wife and kids afterwards and say, you know, and they'll yeah. ask a question about something and I have a little bit of background knowledge, you know, because of that. So that, that's cool. You know? And a lot of people don't realize, too, like when you're talking about, like, if it's not exactly like the comics, like a lot of people don't realize, like, like the written word doesn't always translate to film well. Like, there's that, there's that middle point where, like, if you look at longer movies like the Lord of the Rings series, right, they, they make a real effort at putting as much from the books into the movies as possible. But if you do too much, you get The Hobbit, right? Where it's just like, you're like, oh my god, no more dialogue. Like, <laughs> I can't, you know what I mean? You get to that point where it's uh -huh. you're oversaturated, you've lost your audience. And so, like, uh, that's why I'm on the, I'm in the same vein of thought with, like, shit needs to be reinvented for cinema. That's just how that works. You know, a lot of times people complain that a movie adaptation isn't just like the books. I mean, look at what they did with Transformers, like... I, it, maybe just because I'm watching a lot of it now, because my son is is watching the original series. Um, but it's like the, they they blatantly just change so so much from that series. It's almost not even this. It's it's almost not even this the same thing, you know. Oh yeah, a lot um, of people you know cry blasphemy on that one, and, and a lot of other things too, you know. But that's why I've kind of gotten out of that camp, and you know, it getting getting all worried about if it's you know literal right. translation. Nick Swartzen did account, did a you know? bit on this. He's like, people are so jaded now. He's like, people just need to like appreciate shit. Like, if you show Transformers to people like sixty years ago, like their heads would explode. <laughs> and it's and it's true. <laughs> it's, it's you know, it's like true. you have to like the the series. Okay, the second one sucks, but like what out of these types of these movies and stuff. Usually the second one seems Whatever, to be the weakest. The second one's but they made a, a comeback with the third, and it's yeah, and they tried. They made a... like they, for what they are, they're cool. Like they're they're super cool to watch. They're super entertaining just for the talent that went in, into uh, you yeah. know the graphic rendering and that whole team. And, and it's good mindless uh, fun, man. I mean, don't make it anything yeah, more really, than it is. It's it's fun yeah. to watch yourself with your kids, high, whatever, man. I mean, it really is because it's just. You know what I mean? It's appealing. You know, there's yeah. some, there's some comical stuff with uh, the characters, Shia LaBeouf and such, and you've got the Marines walking around with the, you know, with the hoorah shit, you know, for the women and everything That's... to look at Josh Dumel and Tyrese or whoever, yeah. you know, with their bulging biceps. And it's, it's got a little something for everybody, you know. Well, that's why, like, in so. general, like, I try, I try to be less critical than I used to be, and I don't always achieve it, but, like, I even watched this, this documentary recently about, um, I think, Jamie Kennedy, who isn't very funny, by the way, I don't think, um, but talks about talks about criticism and, and people just, like, saying shit. And, and it's like, I don't know, it's like a lot of times we don't just applaud the effort, like, for what it is. Like, that's why I, I never really got along with movie critics, like, you know, Ebert and Roper, and one of them just died, I think, Ebert, right? Um, <laughs> eight years ago. But... Uh, well, people make no, it a big. That was Cisco. That was Cisco. Ebert just died. Yeah, yeah Ebert just died recently. Well, people make it oh, a big really? deal, and I'm yeah. sure he. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he was really important to the to that community in a lot of ways. But in a lot of ways too, like he didn't understand that, like, uh, you know, boner and fart jokes for 12 to 14 year olds is an audience with an opinion. You know, as much as as you, who has an opinion about character development and all these more sophisticated, you know, 
palatable things you see in a movie, right? So I just I never understood why there's there's not more of a middle ground with viewership where people are like, oh well, that's just not for me, and that's okay. Like instead, people go out of the way to like trash things when they don't agree with it. Like I I try I'm, oh, I try yeah. to get away from that because that's sometimes my natural response is like, you fucking idiot, you know. <laughs> Well, you know what I try to do is I try to look at the movie and the demographic they were going for and the vein that it was being done. And if I'm watching American Pie, okay, I'm in the mindset of wanting to, like, drink and freaking smoke a bong and, you know, <laughs> think about partying days, right? I mean, seriously, that's the mindset you want to get into, okay? As long as they're not having me going into American Pie thinking it's going to be, you know, this 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 drama slash love story, you know what I mean? <laughs> so if I go into a romantic comedy or a drama that I'm watching with my wife, maybe it's not right up my alley, it's not my favorite thing I like to watch, but I try to change my perspective and think about, you know, okay, if I was the target audience they were going for, you know, is this, is this a heartfelt movie? It is. You know what I mean? A lot of Disney movies that you watch are great. If you have a family and if you have kids and a heart and you care a little bit about things, sometimes they will. They'll, they'll, they'll choke you up a little bit. And there's nothing wrong with that, I don't think. But it's a different mindset watching that as opposed to, you know, watching Transformers, you know, <laughs> which is just balls to the wall, good, fun, mindless action, you know. And then you've and got guys like thoughts. Sean who are just pleased no matter what. Oh, it's easy. It's easy to please me. <laughs> Give me a three hundred pound woman, and I'm good to go. <laughs> I like mustard on my hot dog. Well, on that, uh, there's a you know app on your phone that that Flickster, which is pretty cool. If you can find a good like critic that you, you can connect with, then you know, fuck it, like check out that critic, and you can see. I think it's like connected with Rotten Tomatoes. If you can find that critic that has your taste, then you know who cares if you know forty six percent of the critics actually approve of it because, you know, f who cares? You know, the best movies that's are That's cool like, that you can follow a, a guy with individual Yeah, that that's really neat because I tell you, the last several years now since I have, maybe last eight to ten years since I've been on the computer and a lot more at work, at home, whatever, it's just natural progression, I now, and I try not to let it affect me, but I have, in, in many cases, read a game review or a movie review or something like that, and I wind up reading a few of them. I don't just read one, but if I see that there's some common threads amongst them, and ultimately I think that a lot of these assholes just get together and they brain pull, brainstorm and put together one general review and that they all pull and word the topics differently because you notice some of them are almost exactly word for word, have the same pluses, the same minuses, there the same There is like a 2020 special words. on that. There's like yeah, a whole industry. That's what it seems like. But I've let that affect me, though. You know, I mean, there's been some games that I passed on. I mean, you know, Dead Island Riptide just came out a couple weeks ago. And if you read the reviews, they talk about it being a glitch-fest piece of dog shit. It's one of the best games I've played this year, hands down. Co-op, you know, the co-op is great. Um, it's just fun. You know, it's a good visceral game. I like the, the combat and the way it, it is and everything. But if I would have, you know, done what I have done with some other things in the past and based it solely off the reviews, the overwhelming amount of reviews are like, it's dog shit, pass on it, you know, so that's really cool to know that you can do that uh, through, uh, you said it's through Flickster, Tim? Yeah, it's through Yeah, there's, a, there's an app Flickster, that's through Flickster an and, you, okay. and Rotten Tomatoes is connected to it so you can check all the reviews. You can actually look at all the movies that are being out, like how Avatar 2 is going to come out like next Christmas, you can even go that far out. Oh, nice, nice, that's really cool, man, yeah, because I'm a, you know, pretty big, pretty big movie buff, man, so that'll, that'll be neat. I'd recommend it. <laughs> Seriously, you know what? I'm going to nominate myself from now on. Whenever there's like a more, more than one second uncomfortable silence, I'm just going to randomly start saying something. <laughs> I don't think it's uncomfortable. <laughs> it's funny. I've been doing a little experiment this week because I'm I'm always like the same as the day guy. So I was just like, I'm not I'm not going to say anything today when I know. Well, I always don't want to step on your dick, you know, because even though it is kind of like a community thing, you know, it's it's your, it's your channel and you're kind of the guy that We're just hanging it. out. So I'm always know, just like, this is like, a pretty low effort production. Like, you know, you know I've just accepted it for what it is. It's okay. Like, I like I like <laughs> hanging out, you know, so <laughs> let's make it fun, you know. I, I say that, like, we we generate, we our goal should should be to make the most outrageous topic list and just make it like four things and throw that in the background and then just and then just fucking talk about whatever the fuck we want to talk about cuz the beginning of the show we always do that that's how we always start the show guys for for our viewers out there is usually it's like oh we're just sometimes like yeah, we're like okay let's get on topic but it usually starts with just some like nonsense from the pre-show or like whatever you know i think that's what's best sure i do not agree or disagree. 
was okay. the question. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to Christy. She just got in. I'm trying to cover my face so it doesn't seem like I'm like interjecting with a mute. Interjecting with a mute. Hey, Christy, how was your how was your very setting like that? It was good. When you're coming in the bedroom. <laughs> All right, who's got, got our uh, bus. who's got our next topic? Do we got another good topic, or are we uh, or are we out of gas tonight? I think we have more topics. I, just, I was going to say there's there's a shitload of topics. I just can't remember them all. That's all. So, I, uh, um, if I commit anything else to memory, I'm going to start forgetting important shit like where I live. And my little kids Wayne, names. Little Wayne fired by Pepsi Co over Emmett Till verse. Yeah, his his exact verse was. Uh, from a song called Karate Chop, and it was Beat That Pussy Up Like Emmett Till. If you don't know who Emmett Till was, he's, he was a 14-year-old black youth who was killed in 1955 for whistling at a white woman. He was beaten to death beyond recognition for whistling at a white woman. So we're going to beat that pussy like Emmett Till. You know, and it's funny because it goes back to a few weeks ago when we did one or two and the whole uh, Rick Ross with the... Uh, you know, the ecstasy thing, dropping the ecstasy in, and he ended up get losing uh, his sponsorship with Reebok. So it's funny how these hip-hop artists over these last basically four or five weeks are being held uh, under fire and being scrutinized for their lyrics. People got to lighten the fuck up, though, too. I mean, realistic. In the last 20 years, how many times have you heard, oh, man, I Rodney King, that motherfucker. You know, it just became a household thing to say, okay? Rodney King got his ass beaten. You know what? He was lucky enough to have somebody tape the cops beating his ass, you know? So he still got paid and everything else. And well, I think he wound up dying now or committed suicide or something a couple years ago. But the point is, is I'm just saying, you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> yeah, that's true. He is gone. But, but just the, the world in general just needs to lighten the fuck up, and especially this country. You know what I mean? You guys, somebody's so afraid to say this and say that. Companies yeah, dropping this. Yeah, I think we just need to not be so easily you know? offended. Yeah, like that it goes hand in hand with that whole tolerance is, thing. Man. Yeah. You, you know, gotta, whether you like Little Wayne or not, and I don't really care. I'm indifferent about the guy, but whether you like him or whoever it is, it's, a lot of times it's just an offhanded remark. You know what I mean? Who cares that when Mel Gibson was drunk, he made some Jew comments. Who the fuck cares? But he's anti-Semitic. He hates Jews. Maybe he does. Maybe he yeah, does. But people really always realistic. behave like they have this higher moral ground anyways. When most people who say it shit anyways, you haven't made a racist joke in your life? Come on. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like you probably people, made three today. You know? It's, but you know, point the, you know the funny at, at part is? Mean, the funny part about the whole situation is, is uh, Lil Wayne and Rick Ross were saying the same shit before they signed with Reebok and PepsiCo. And they knew what they were getting into. It's not like, you know, Lil Wayne or Rick Ross went from being fucking Will Smith, you know, fucking um, <laughs> get jiggy with it rap to fucking saying, you know, no, no, beat no, that no, pussy no, like no, Emmett no. Till. I mean, that's the whole thing. I mean, it's not like it happened overnight. It was the shit that's been going on for years and years yeah, and like, years. What, cal what, caliber, what caliber of a relationship did you expect out of a contract with Lil Wayne? Yeah, I'm exactly. sorry. <laughs> like, it's like, seriously, you weren't, you weren't expecting fucking Shakespearean like poetry. You know, I mean, so that's, uh, like getting in, that's like getting in a contract with me and not expecting me to say fuck for thirty seconds. Yeah, exactly. We should. That's that should be a game one one week. Is somehow profit off of Sean's uh, fuck swear jar. <laughs> We'd be we'll rich. Donate every single time we swear. But like with beer, we should we'll donate up, beer. We'll set up a PayPal account. <laughs> oh, we're incorporating drinking again. Uh oh. Yeah. Chris says no. <laughs> no. Tim, when are you going to be done? <laughs> <laughs> Come and park the yellow box right here, baby. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> Take it to the car and wash. <laughs> Vax that shit. What is it? Turn it off? <sighs> Just turn it off. <laughs> nice. I got to like re click. There we go. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like dimmed a little bit too. Great being mirrored when you're half ass, you're trying to show something like, uh, blah. So, <laughs> yeah, I just figured that out now. I thought it just mirrored my bottom thing that in there. No, so, it mirrors everything. I keep wondering why every time I turn my head to the right or the left, it does it. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, there Seriously, it's like I haven't been drinking in at least two or three days. You know? <laughs> now everyone's just 
just doing their thing in the camera. That's Holy God. Okay. This is our first day. Let's circle back around there, fellas. We're, uh, where are we at now with that? Well, we're getting um, off, well I think we're just fishing off with little Dwayne. I think uh, yeah. I, th I think the bus didn't weigh in yet on that. Uh, what's uh, what's your feeling on this nonsense there, bus? Um, you should endorse anyone from Young Money. Nicki Minaj, Lil Wayne, Drake, yada yada yada. You shouldn't. Endorse. You should not. Should you should not, not okay. support any of that. It's garbage. It, okay. it, it's garbage. But like I said before, it's like anybody who is, you know, if you're gonna have someone. I have just my whole mindset is just fucking. I just, I, I guess, I just can't believe that you know when you get in, sign a contract with Lil Wayne or, or, or Rick Ross that you think, oh, it's going to be great. There's not going to be people protesting after what they've said in the past. It just, it doesn't make sense to me. It makes Reebok and Pepsi Cola look like a bunch of fucking morons. I mean, seriously, what do you expect? I mean, and and the fact is, like you know, you said uh, Latuzek is everybody needs to lighten the fuck up. It's like, you know, what the fuck? I mean, it's like if someone says something and they don't like it and they protest enough, you get dropped. That's like if fucking uh, Michael Jordan, you know, 20 years ago, uh, dropped an F-bomb while doing an interview that, you know, fucking some, you know, Christian organization group, you know, oh my God, he's a role model and he just said, fuck, we should drop him from Nike. Seriously, <laughs> could you imagine that shit? I mean, that's the same crap. I well, personally Tiger think Woods, it's a bunch of nonsense. Well, Tiger Woods, they... Uh... Uh, they initially dropped him, but then when he started winning again, they're like, you know, they had that commercial where it's like, Tiger, as long as you're winning, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> That's exactly well, like, what they said with the swoosh. Now he's doing. Now he's doing what Lindsey Vaughn. So. People, people are just so much more easily offended too, just because of the nature of how information travels now. I mean, bef before the internet and social media, like, you know, being politically correct was important to some people, but it wasn't as like socially standard now. Like, it's it's weird. Like, before it was optional. Like, my, my parents are racist as fuck, and everyone kind of accepted that they had a group of friends. You know what I mean? Like, the, it's just how that worked. Like, now, you can't fucking... It, if you're racist as fuck now, good, good luck. You know? And I'm not saying, like, oh, like, it's okay to be racist, but pretend like you're not racist just to be socially okay. But I'm glad that, like... I'm glad that in that way we can communicate with people like that. Like I don't know. I f I feel like right now everyone's super sensitive because it's like be aware of my problem, my issues, what's going on in my world, and that's cool because we can all share that now with social media and the internet. But it's like enough, enough, like just spreading awareness about shit. Like when is it like okay, we take action on this thing now? You know. So it's I don't know. I feel like there's all these awareness campaigns. When are we going to start, you know, just be more tolerant, like you guys are saying, like, be less offended, like, be less sensitive, just be part of the solution and not a part of the problem. Yeah, I mean, it's complete bullshit, because, like, with our parents back in the day, that's back, you know, back in those days, I mean, it, it was cool to smoke, you know what I mean? It was all right to, uh, it was advertised on TV, you know, and everything else, and now it's like, oh, my God, God forbid you smoke, man. I mean, you can't smoke anywhere. I mean, even... You know, in your bedroom underneath the covers with the fucking lights off, you know, they'll get you some way, shape, or form. We just stayed in a hotel up in Gurney called Key Lime Cove. It says there's no smoking anywhere on the property, even on the balconies and everything else. Get this, even in the parking lot, all that shit. And if you choose to smoke in your room, that's fine. We're going to charge you $300, though, to clean, you know, for the cleaning fee or whatever. You know, I don't know if they're going to fum fumigate the room or what have you if you smoke. But I'm thinking, you got to be kidding me. I don't smoke anymore, but. Really? I mean, we've, we've gotten to that point. And it's the same type of thing. Back when our parents, you know, in the generation of our parents, saying things like, oh, man, he's got chinkaman eyes, you know, or, uh, or that's a Dago t-shirt, you know what I mean? Those were things that were said by, like, everybody, you know what I mean? It was just sort of, there was jokes about right. Polacks and Wops and all that type of stuff. And people accepted it just because even though they were different and there was, there was different areas of town and things like that, people were more just... I guess accepting of it, you know what I mean. Um, and I'm not but, saying that like racial slurs like should be like, you know, a regular part of life. But maybe there's like a maybe there's a midway point there. Is my is my yeah? Is I my think there's a comfortable you know I mean? medium, you know what I mean? Because 
where they were at then and where we're at now, where I mean, you know, God forbid, you, you can't say anything. You know, people get offended if you if you, if you, if you, if you can't say Mexican. Well, you are from Mexico. You're a Mexican. What do you want me to call you? You know, we talked about this in the pre-show, but there's people that you know that do they get it? They're so sensitive now. You know, what I mean that it's the they're just the looking for it. They're, they're looking for something. They're looking to make something out of nothing, and it's like people are just so afraid, and, and then they have to mince their words. And God forbid, oh, this person must be a racist because on this show they said this and it insinuated that maybe they were at one point thinking poorly of this other race. And it's, to, you know, to get on the Mexican thing, as I've said, you know, I've said like <laughs> I try to be, you know, <laughs> I try to be politically correct with everything I say because I deal with you know. You know, all kinds of races, religions, creeds, colors, every, every day. And it's like, you know, I try to, instead of saying Mexican, say Hispanic. And I've had someone say, I'm not Hispanic, I'm Mexican. And I'm like, oh, okay. You can be whatever the fuck you want. Well, you're actually American, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> My bad. You know. And that's the thing is that, listen, man, we're, you know, we're all different in one way, shape, or form. I, you know, I'm uh, mostly Polish, uh, Polish, Irish, and I think Ukrainian or whatever. And, man, I, I, can, I can take uh, a Polak joke, uh, you know, a joke about, uh, you know, Irishmen and, and being drunks and everything else. I don't give a shit, man, you know. And it's, uh, I, I guess it's just, you know, <laughs> it's just a different outlook and a different perspective, you know. So I take offense uh, to Irish, Irishmen being drunk. <laughs> are you, you're not even Irish, are you? Yeah, I'm half Irish. Half Irish, half Italian. <laughs> Fucking oh, 100% that's... stupid. Yeah, I was going to say, that's... 10% stupid. I was going to say, you got to be the life of the party at a wedding, man. That's oh, wow. that is awesome. <laughs> That's great. You get the drinking in you with the they Irish. Don't fucking, the, they, don't, they don't like open bar when I show up. <laughs> <laughs> open bar for everybody but him yeah, right exactly. here. So, he has to put a big... Eight. Put a big X on his right hand and his forehead. So what he's, beer he's are you dash. on right now, Rosy Cheeks? <laughs> Seven. Seventeen. Seven. 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 <laughs> Plus four. Plus the two I drank before while I was. Plus there. the forty ounce right before the show. <laughs> and the two then, in the bathroom while you were pissing out the seven you first yeah. drank at the beginning of the show. Then then the tall boys while I was in the bathroom. Oh my god. Uh, I tell ya. Wow. Anyway, on that note, so so the moral of the story on that one is I think we can all agree that people can be a little bit more tolerant of things and not look for things to get offended and upset about. You know, yeah, like, so. I, I hate when I tell someone it burns when I pee and they take offense to that. <laughs> Seriously, you got someone against guys with STIs? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And STDs, STIs. <laughs> Seriously, I have an infection. I'm asking for your help. And you're not helping. <laughs> now, sort of on like the opposite side of like the being more tolerant thing, what really fucking pisses me off is like cheap likes on Facebook. Do you, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Where it's like people are posting shit up there just so you're like, oh yeah, I'll fucking click on that. What a wonderful I, morning. I, I don't like anything but besides what are you like, talking about like where they show the picture of like, you know, like the kid that's got like the tumor the size of a fucking football ball hanging out the back of his head and it's like oh yeah little Timothy's gone through 17 operations and he's only 9 days old he's underweight and this and that and the doctors have invented surgeries to keep him alive he looks like an alien from another fucking planet but we you know let's see if we can get him some likes because if we do Coca-Cola is going to donate a dollar for every like his little Timmy gets you know, and they pull on the hard strings. Are you talking about those type of things? Some, or are you talking like, about like some of those? Of, because they, 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 I don't know. I'm I guess like some of those stuff. Like, so, some of that stuff, like yeah. for, for the most part, when it's that type of stuff, I'm like, okay, like uh, I get it. Like, you know, being in remission, like having your last cancer treatment, like all these things, and, and you put up a cute little sign, whatever. But it became like a thing for what it was like, get, you get me this, and then people who should give me what I should already be getting will give me this because I got the likes. Like it's like whoring out likes. And I and I don't like that. The the thing that bothers me most, and maybe it's maybe I just need to change my fucking friends list, but you guys tell me if you see the same thing. I see all of these fucking like quotes from from girls from these pages of like what what the industry wants them to think love is. You, you know what I mean? It's like I love it when a guy is like always I I, I don't know. It's just this cheesy sixteen year old fucking shit. Yeah, my my favorite that, is the that uh, grown single women mothers. are clicking on. Yeah, my my I have a few single mother friends that are out there, and hope none of them <laughs> are actually watching because uh, they're going to be offended by what I say next. But they decided to go and spread their legs at some point in their life, okay, and and be with a guy that, and they wound up not using protection. You know, got pregnant, had a child, 
whether it was intended or not or whatever, right, the baby daddy is no longer a part of their lives, okay, and um, or not as big of a part as they would like. So they put up these quotes about like, oh yeah, it takes, a, like a little boy can go and get somebody pregnant, but it takes a man to be a father. You know, and all these like digs at men in general. And it's just like, listen, you know, you're the one that made the mistake with that to begin with. And I know it takes two to tango and everything else, but it's like I see these quotes up there all the time from them. And, 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 the, and the same group of them pass the quotes around to each other because they see it on each other's page. So I'm constantly bombarded with those, you know what I mean? And it's some sort of catchy saying about, you know, basically just in the male species in general, you know, just pretty much putting us down, you know. Yeah, yeah, that man hater so, shit is always yeah. it's irritating. I'll look yeah, through my feed now. I'll, child thing. I'll find I'll find a few soon, like just by going through my feed here, but like it's they're so fucking aggravating. No, it's just a cry for help though. I mean, all these people are doing is they they maybe they can't talk to someone or maybe it's like you know, the social outlet now of people is okay. instead of, like, bitching here's, to a friend, you bitch to, like, 7,000 friends. Here, Here's one in my news feed. Shared from the group, oh, no, mama's off her meds again. I'm not a one-in-a-million kind of girl. I'm a once-in-a-lifetime kind of woman. Oh, that would be for I, immediately. I, I sent it out at 1.15 p.m. this afternoon. That one's really nice. And then I reposted it at 3.09, yeah, exactly. 3.11, and 4.15. <laughs> <laughs> See, I have like oh, seven Facebook friends, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> that's that's funny. That's twice the amount of friends you have in real life. Okay, I'm, I didn't know you can have negative friends in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I see that shit get passed around, too. Or, like, the attention grabbers, uh, and I'm sorry, but these are mainly females out there that just put some random nonsensical thing up there, like, you really know what people's true colors are after something like this. And there's, that's all. There's no explanation. There's no picture. And it's just like, okay, listen, who wronged you, and why the hell do I got to fucking play detective on this one? Because all that is is, like, a how many people can I get to say, oh, you're such a great person, and what's wrong with you? You know what I mean? Uh, that bothers me as well. So, I like the breakups on Facebook, that. though. I mean, it's like break up, and it's like, hey, what are you doing later? <laughs> I don't see those. I don't. Uh, I don't think I have enough friends. Neither do I. So don't worry about it, Latuza. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if I've seen those. So you know, I got uh, different different crowds. You know, most one, most most of the people I know are married, divorced. You know, so uh, you know the breakups are long past, and nobody my age really posts on Facebook. They just go on Facebook and. And fight you to lay that games that you don't want to play. Yeah. <laughs> hey, come and join me in Bubble Pop. I had to block all those because it's like, no, I don't want to freaking raise sheep with you in Farmville, okay? It's like, seriously, it's like, I don't even talk to you in real life. Like, I don't want to fucking raise imaginary animals in a fucking Facebook game with you. What are my crops? So <laughs> it's like, no, I'm not going to give you five coins by participating in this, you know? <laughs> so. I just love when I get the random invites from people I don't really talk to. Like, I had a random invite this week from a guy who used to be my boss. He's like, invited you to the March of Dimes, March for Babies. And it's like, okay, dude. Um, for one, I'm not going to march anywhere, and you live in Texas, so why the fuck? Healthy do babies. That? I mean, it's just like, and I mean, there was like another one. It's like, come to my daughter's prom. I mean, yeah. I mean, send off to prom. It's like, for one, I don't even think I talked to you in high school. And for two, why the fuck are you inviting me to your daughter's sent off for prom? I, mean, I just didn't understand that. It was really, really confusing to me. I mean, of course, I'm going to go because it'll be fun, but I mean, seriously. I mean, All right, here, here, here's another one. Don't worry when I fight with you. Worry when I stop because it means there's nothing left for us to fight for. Oh, God. Or just like, group, I fucking hate him and you know who him is. Kiss. Like, I, I just can't stand this shit. I know, you know what um, it is? It's like, uh, it's, it's all like, I call it the Destiny's Child Syndrome. <laughs> if anybody remembers the Destiny's Child group that was popular, I think, back there in the 90s and maybe early 2000s, it was all about man-hating. That's what it was. You know what I mean? Right. Every, every one of their songs, think about but even it. But even beyond that, like, about, not bands, you know? like that, that group yeah. was about that. But even beyond that, like, to me, like, I just can't stand the shit that's painting an image of romance and love for young people that's spread by the media and movies and radio and television, whatever the fuck else out there influences young women, and then people reinforce it by reposting this type of shit online. Here's another one. It's hard when someone special ignores you, but it's harder pretending that you just don't care. Like, All right, I'm actually going to 
to look on mine right now too. People, people <laughs> to like in real relationships. Okay, for for those of you out there who don't know, I'm not just talking on my ass, and it's and I, and, I, and I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal either because I've been with my wife now. We've been together for for ten years, but uh, we've been married for this is our third year. Um, but anyways, that, that, that's not that's not the point. The, the point the point is though is that like when you're in a real relationship with somebody things don't work whatsoever what you see in the movies what you see in your fucking news feed it, none of it is this this sob story bullshit you work things out as two individuals who understand that you have differences but your common interest is that you love each other enough that you're going to try and fucking make it work and if you're not if you're not coming at every problem like how dare you try and make me change you know what you're probably a shitty person you probably need to change a little bit <laughs> and your partner does too well, you, if you understand that process and compromise like that's how relationships work well okay not this shit like oh there's nothing left to fight for he doesn't love me anymore you can't think in these terms of like what you fucking see in TV and shit it's just so aggravating to me sometimes I wish I was a little kid again skinned knees are easier to fix than broken hearts <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, if, oh, if someone wow. posted that on my Facebook page, I would unfriend them. <laughs> I mean, I don't have many friends. I would still unfriend them. No, but like the thing is, is like I, I see grown women reposting this type of shit. When you feel like giving up, remember why you held on for so long in the first place. Like I guess some of this stuff can like it, it could be like hip shot like advice that like okay it's it's sending a positive message but overall it paints this image of like just lo love as it does not exist anywhere and then people go into relationships thinking this is how things are supposed to work and then if somebody doesn't fucking do everything but kill their fucking dog for you um, they're a piece of shit otherwise like it's just it's it's crazy to me like it's just that's not how the real world works it's like okay here's a stupid example but I think it's a relevant one did you guys like I remember watching movies and, and television and stuff growing up thinking that high school was going to be this one type of experience by the way it's portrayed and then you get into high school and it's fucking nothing like what's in the movies they hint at something like maybe you experience in retrospect but going through it is nothing like what you see portrayed in television and film it's just not you know you have moments like that maybe but by and large the experience isn't is nothing like what's portrayed in in cinema or just popular culture so it infuriates me like when you see young relationships getting off on the wrong leg because of some like social conditioning some like premeditated like you're not even asking if that even makes sense you're just hitting share and believing in what's on the stupid fucking groups page like that shit fucking bothers me i think it gets pushed around with social media quicker but i think it's always been there because i mean you did I mean, even just with you know movies i mean it, it just it, as an example i mean for the last whatever 50 60 70 years however long they've been relevant i mean that's they've portrayed um you know a, a certain sense of, of how a relationship should be and how love should be and how you know what i mean and, and uh you know, and the same thing with the, the magazines and everything else. So I think it's always been there. I think now it's just, you, know, you see it more and it's more prevalent in your face because of the social media aspect of it, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah that's that's my opinion. I think that's, like, how social media has worked in general is, like, this catalyst for awareness. Like, we're all so much more aware of shit because of social media. So in that way, like, I, I agree that it's really good. I guess it just bothers me because, like, you're right. It was always present, but now we're, like, we're reinforcing it, like, and, and uh, like needlessly. Like, ho Hollywood does a good enough job fucking up people's impressions of how things work just being Hollywood. Like, you know, we don't need additional support by fucking everybody on Facebook land, which is well, not a lot of people. With cheesy garbage like that comes, you know, trolling and as, as you guys, you might not know, but Joe knows that, you know, as many cheesy people out there, there's going to be a troller to troll them, troll the hell out of them. So, I mean, as, as much as you have uh, these people doing the stupid shit, Comedy comes from it, you know, the comic relief of, I'm looking at one right now where I guarantee there's a meme out there that says, shine bright like a, di shine bright like a diamond from Rihanna, which is, doesn't make any fucking sense. But then there's like the, the cheesy, like, old time guy that's like, diamonds don't shine, they reflect you, bitch. So it's like, <laughs> little things like that, it's just like. They refract light and send it in different directions. Joe, I think you're, when it comes to pictures at least, I think you're thinking of that like Tumblr shit where it's like, oh, when, you know, boys, things boys do that girls like, and it's like, you know, when yeah, that boy yeah, like yeah. hugs you, or like yeah, when the boy like has that. a nice back or something, and it shows like a skinny Bieber guy yeah, with like yeah, a, yeah. flexing his back with a tat, and then like, I like the ones, the spinoff ones that I just discussed where it's like, 
and it's just like this really jacked guy, and he's just like, you know, completely makes fun of it. Well, I'm gonna say that like the like the four chan that you posted earlier with the the, the sex tape given to the, the kid on their birthday. <laughs> Dude, I busted out laughing. My son's sitting next to me. He's like, "What are you laughing?" I'm like, "Nothing." Oh, that's funny. Who posted that? Was it? Who was I it? I think it was you, wasn't it? Oh, was it? Yeah. <laughs> it might have been. I don't know. I, I didn't see like, that one. But it was like some like like on one. Facebook. It like it was that. like, you know, how you were made, featuring mommy and daddy with special guest appearance by Uncle Bob or something like that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I fucking yeah. couldn't stop but laugh. Oh, God, I'll have to look that one up. Um, yeah, you gotta this, love 4chan, dude. Uh, Christy just came in and told me this. This is not on the, the topic list, but uh, from a source, credible source of Christy, she told me that uh, the Sesame Street cookie monster will now be the vegetable or veggie monster. Oh, that's old. That's been going on for quite some time. I've heard that rumors. I think that's been going around since like 06 or 07, actually. Oh, is, that, is that a rumor or is that something that they're actually trying to do? Well, I know it's they something they're trying to do. They try yeah. to do, like, okay, I, sp I speak from uh, an expertise position with my two-year-old watching Sesame Street incessantly. Um, <laughs> no, I'm really not an expert, but th what they'll do, what they've been doing off and on, is they'll have, like, Cookie Monster doesn't just like cookies, he also likes vegetables, and we'll do a segment of him, like, going crazy oh. over carrots. And shit. So they kind of oh, did a compromise wow. because I guess they, they did propose the idea of replacing cookies with like celery or a carrot. And then people were like, you can't fucking do that to Cookie Monster, but you can show moderation. And I think that's what they're, they're trying to make Cookie do more is like when he has his outbursts, it's, it's usually for vegetables. And occasionally it's for some a big fucking plate of cookies. <laughs> and, and again, and that's that's you know what that is. That's the oversensitive nature of everything. You know, America in general, everybody's worried about all the fat fucks that are out there and the people. You know, and, and I hate to be like that because uh, you know I've put on a little extra weight uh, at times in my life, and you know now I'm back to to working out and doing well with that. But you know, I went to that uh, water park over the last couple of days, and I mean, there's people that honestly, you should be embarrassed to come out in a, a pair of shorts or a swimsuit. I mean, I you know, I mean, ass cracks hanging out and everything everything else and you know fucking 300 400 pounds you know and I, and I may be guessing on the light side and you're wondering how can these people even get upright you know and but the, those are the people and their fat kids and everything they're being raised because parents are uh, you know everything is you know it's fast food and it's whatever's easy and uh, you know whatever's advertised the best on TV you know that looks good so America's becoming fat so you know oversensitive groups think that it's the cookie monsters fault because he endorses cookies and makes them look cool you know and has a you know, a little tirade and eats them, you know. And I think that's some of the stupidest shit ever. Because if you think by making the Cookie Monster eat broccoli that you're going to solve the obesity problem in this country, you got, you got a long fucking road ahead of you. Well, then you might as well take off the fucking so, McDonald's commercials and fucking, I mean, if you're going to kill well, the Cookie Monster, I mean, there's so much stuff you might as well get rid of. You might as well not fucking even turn on the TV. Yeah, and I mean, just, yeah, in, in general, I mean, there's just so much out there that uh, that contributes to this, you know. Uh, this problem, but but the main thing is is parents. That's what it is. You know what I mean. You have parents that uh, both parents oh, exactly. work full time it's... jobs, and uh, they they don't really they come home. They don't feel like making a full dinner, uh, or uh, you know they want to make a quick meal, so they throw something together, and uh, you know the kid winds up sitting in front of a TV eating his dinner half the time. And um, you know, so I mean, that, that's what's contributing to it is is really it's it's the parents. You know. So, well, because that's that's line. that's generally like society's view lately, like. Has has just been like, uh, oh man, like there's no intervening force, so everything that's seen and heard by any potential audience has to be like we've talked about politically correct and like all these sensibilities and stuff. And while I agree that some moderation is necessary, I also think that like yeah, there is this intervening force, which are your fucking parents who are supposed to be deciding what is good and bad for you. And because some people make poor decisions, we we try and make rules for every exception and it just that's not how it works we need we need to operate more on like the essence of things like what a principle is instead of like you know i don't know trying to fucking safeguard against every single possible thing that can go wrong that's know? the thing and we're so busy you know looking at all this nitpicking about all this small bullshit that we're forgetting fundamentally important things like you know kids are fucking schmucks nowadays that have no respect i mean i live near palatine high school and the particular street that we live on, um, 
it's it for whatever reason. It just doesn't have sidewalks right here. You know, you go 100 feet down to the next street, there are sidewalks. So a lot of <laughs> kids walk through the area over here. Now, when I was a kid, okay, and even till this day, if I'm walking in the street, I usually never walk down the middle of the street. I mean, even if it's two in the morning during a snowstorm and it's a side street, I still generally walk in that you know that that two or three feet towards the side of the street towards a curb unless it's flooded or something like that. And if I was walking down the middle of the street riding a bike or whatever and I hear a car coming from behind me or see one coming in front of me, I move the fuck over. You know why? Because the car is bigger than me. It doesn't matter that I have the right of way and that I got an iPhone and that I'm posting on Facebook at the time. The simple thing you do is you move over to the side of the fucking street, okay? But every day, it's groups and it's it's different groups of kids. Okay, <laughs> yesterday I wound up yelling at uh, at some some ethnic uh, children. I think they were Spanish or something like that, you know. And I had had it. I mean, they one of them turned and looked at us coming in in the van behind them. They're walking four across, and they're taking up the whole goddamn street. And none of them even made an effort after seeing this fucking three thousand pound car coming towards them to move <laughs> out of the way. You know, so I mean, I literally jumped out of the car and said, "Get the fuck out of the road," you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're really oh, no, no, no. they didn't say a word. They moved over to the side, you know. We go and we, we I get back in the car, we, we drive past or whatever, you know, and I see they go right back to the same same thing in the road. It's like no respect whatsoever. And and just are you that stupid that you don't fear getting hit by a car? Dude, you're it's funny piss like, off the wrong person, you know. This what I mean? is slowly <laughs> the process. Do you guys understand right now? This is slowly the process that will erode us down into old men who sit on their front fucking porches. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, happening. it's happening. I've always wondered we like we won't have to sit on our front stoop to do it. We can do it every week here on Tuesday. Hey, These fucking like... kids have no respect. Didn't didn't our grandparents <laughs> say that about us and shit? Like it's crazy. Like I wonder what it's gonna be for our kids' kids. Yeah, kids, no, kids. you're right. But I think with me it's it's the common sense and not being so common anymore and just the, the blatant mindlessness and stupidity of it. You know what I mean? Because oh, totally, here's the yeah. thing where it's not even about respecting your elders and eating your vegetables and all the shit you're supposed to do that you were taught as a child, you know, open doors for women or whatever, depending on how you were raised, what you heard. Okay. But listen, I'm not even talking about that. This is just the fundamental, this is survival right here. Okay. Something bigger and heavier that can kill you, a death machine in <laughs> essence, is coming towards you <laughs> at a clip faster than you can run. What do you do? A, be a fucktard and stand in the middle of the road, or B, just move. I mean, even if you want to look cool while you're while you're shuffling over to the side of the road with your homies, just move to the side of the road, man. You know what I mean? Because I don't want to have to commit a homicide over here. You know what I mean? You know what? On a Terrible. side note, I, that happened one time. We were, <laughs> I was in the car with uh, our brother, uh, Jordan, and... Uh, for people who don't know him, he's got kind of a lead foot. He could be a race car driver. <laughs> and so we're coming down the street one, same thing. A group he's got a short life. temper, which is just a yeah. great combination. Group of small kids, couldn't be over six or seven, or playing in the middle of the road. And uh, one of them's got like a scooter. And so uh, the same thing, as Jordan's coming down, clearly the kids are, are not looking to move. Um, and so what does Jordan do? He fucking stomps on the gas as hard as he can, gets the engine really roaring, and lurches at these kids. <laughs> one kid, the look of terror on his face as he dove. I mean, he dove as far as he could to the curb. And the, just, I'll never forget the look on his face. We were laughing so fucking hard. This kid thought for a split second he was going to fucking die. And it was it was the most honest two seconds I've ever seen on anyone's face. And to see this fat, sweaty little kid jump off to the side of the road was so gratifying. And we that's laughed awesome. our asses off the whole fucking way home. And that's what the majority of kids need out there is they need a like I almost fucking died experience to go and shake them out of to shake the cobwebs out of there. Everybody's worried about the zombie apocalypse. Look outside, man. I mean we, we're experiencing it. Seriously. The automatons walking around bumping into each other while they're fucking texting. They're driving and texting. The light turns green. They're still sitting there staring because they're fucking texting. It's like, are you kidding me? You know what I mean? Not a day goes by when some fucktard didn't kill like a family of five because she was texting her daughter about did she pick up the milk and why did she forget her keys to the house? And you're, you, know, you got to be kidding me, seriously. You know? Yeah, it's, I don't text and drive anymore. I like, I, I won't text while I'm driving if I, if I can avoid it, which is ninety nine percent of the. You know, like like driving isn't hard, and maybe I have more of an appreciation for it because I don't drive. But guess what? Like I I, I sit shotgun very well. Okay, I know where <laughs> things are. I'm Ding like a shotgun. human GPS. And the bottom line is, is that I pay attention even when I'm the passenger in a car. Okay, and I could imagine the heightened amount of awareness that I would have to have if I was the one behind the wheel. And I have respect for that. You know. 
And I think that's why things like that especially piss me off. You know what I mean? The people that are out there that, that can legally drive and take it for granted by being, uh, you know, douchebags. So, anyway, that's, uh, that's my piece on that. <clears throat> D-bags in the car. Sean yeah. drives like a D-bag. Sean's got two sports cars. It was like he had two midlife crises, like, went back to back. <laughs> <laughs> And I got to drive one of those midlife crises from the dealership back to his house, so that was nice. Mm. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. He's, still the, he's still the only other person I know that has driven that car besides myself. Dude, see, people people fucking make fun of me and shit for the way I drive, but shit, man, it got, it got me to drive a sports car. <laughs> That's the reason I picked him, because he drives like a grandma. <laughs> <laughs> my my whole thing is just like I I've seen like I don't need to to experience something really shitty in order to learn from it. I learn from other people's mistakes. So like when I was in driver's class and they showed me that video of the kid getting mangled up because he wasn't fucking paying attention, I was like, I'm gonna not get mangled up on the road. So like that's just the way I drive. Like as to me, no, no, I don't care if it gets me there super ahead of time, on time, on schedule, whatever. Like nothing is important enough for me to risk my life. So I just drive very cautiously. Plus, too, like I don't have really great eyes, so I, I probably compensate for the lot too because I know I don't have great depth perception and and that, that sort of thing. So, so yeah. Hey, it worked for me, man. I needed someone to drive at home. I trusted you. You got it there. That's right, man. Fucking, you can count on me for A to B. Slow driving. <laughs> count on me for slow, slow driving. driving. But, uh, Slow ride. Joe's taking it yeah. easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I think we've got a bunch of topics left over for next week. I think I'm going to call it here. We've been a little past two hours. But uh, but thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, we'll pick up next week with uh, Sean's tiny dick. Oh, that'll be a short conversation. No Very pun short. <laughs> Very short. Just All right, everybody. Have a good night. Just like that, we're gone. Peace. <laughs> Peace.